going up, red is going down. All right, green is good. we're live. <coughs> I assume live. Roughly the same from what I could tell, yes. Okay. I can hear we you, Michael. We also bought near the top of the market. Michael. Down a little bit. Hot mic over there. Hot mic. Hot mic. <laughs> 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 All right, are we good? Are we live on Zoom? Yeah, we just uh, we just need a quick second. Okay. You don't mind giving me a few minutes you guys want to get started i'm going to just get that lit up i gotta run upstairs and grab my keys i can open that up and i can turn everything on okay so we can screen it everybody. already in progress all right but zoom is live and we can be, yeah. people that are uh, community members on zoom are in and everything or it's just going to take me a second so they're all going right. to have to you have to invite them in right yeah they're all they're all admitted they're in. okay yeah, I, just, I think you're going to need the cameras right so i'm going to run okay upstairs. okay so should I? He said he's going to get his okay. keys and do that. All right. So if there are people on Zoom, um, we are just have a slight delay with some technical difficulties, but we'll be starting a meeting soon. We're understaffed like every other business. Yeah. Okay. We need that. Chris, is the presentation for tonight posted on the website as well, or? Just received it. Okay. Yeah, it, it will be. We'll get it up. All right. I'll send it to Susanna right now. your key with you. Thank you. <laughs> came back and lost it.
Ventura. Mr. Mercator spoke oh, so we can, she can share her screen because without, she won't be able to oh, good share point. her presentation. Well, there is a problem. It's a question. I did mention that we were going to be having a presentation. So did you. No. We're missing an actor. Oh, that's just like a gossip oh, website. I'm sorry. I didn't no, it's fine. <laughs> Speculating about where she is. Uh, I think people are trying to get in. Hey, can you guys have ideas on what people have in Kate Middleton? I must be open to them too. <laughs> so, all of a sudden, they're chatting. We'll be getting started in a few minutes. We're just waiting to get the um, projection up for our presentation. Should we? We could start with. Um, do you want to start with roll call and approval of minutes? Or we've got a couple. Yeah, we might as well. Couple things. Yeah, we could. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's get started, and hopefully our screen will be up soon. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is the March 14th, 2024 meeting of the School Building Advisory Committee. Um, tonight's meeting is primarily a workshop meeting. We will be um, having a discussion on the, uh, and an update on the three options that are currently uh, in progress with uh, Harriman Architects. So I think the bulk of the meeting will be Lisa tonight. Uh, we will have a communications update and also a budget update from our, our owner's rep later in the meeting as well. So, uh, first item on the agenda, yeah, we, have we, have every, we have a quorum. Uh, approval of minutes from the previous meeting. So moved. <laughs> okay. Patrick's roll, thank you. Approved. Grab the mic. You know, in reading the minutes, the one piece I'd like to add is it said the enrollment was discussed, and I, I think we did we did end up agreeing to move on with the agreement that we needed we we would have six classrooms right. per level, and so I'd just like to add that to the minutes because I think that's what what we actually agreed to. If everybody's okay with that, six regular ed classrooms. Right, six. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. All right, reports and correspondence. Does anyone have anything they would like to bring up? Want to do public comment? Oh, come on, come say something. We're killing time here. <laughs> <laughs> Want to do public comment? Nobody wants to say anything. I just got one item. Yeah. It came up in an email earlier, I think it went to the group, and it said about answering all their questions. There's a lot of questions and comments that have come through, and I think Cindy mentioned that we are looking at them. Is that as far as we go with it, or do we, are we supposed to do any more with these questions and statements that are being emailed in to us? What question? There was like 200 comments that people had made. Some had some suggestions and Okay, so we're, we're talking about the comments that came in through the feedback yep. form. Uh, I do think, yeah, we do have a summary of that, and I think it would be good to, uh, um, that was posted, all of the comments that we received were posted with the meeting materials for that, um, I think the February 15th mm -hmm. committee meeting, and I know there were a few more that came in following that meeting, so I, I don't think it's a bad idea to pull those comments down again, and I, I know just from reading through them myself, there were some that had different suggestions. There might be, you know, some people didn't even state a preference on an option, but they stated, you know, concerns about traffic flow or something like mm -hmm. that. So I think that's really important information to have. So yeah, in that report that we generated came up with five themes that weren't necessarily related to the options, but things people were concerned about. Okay. Yeah. And we should look at that again. Good point. I, I think that's something maybe we could even put it on an agenda to, to look at to see if there's any anything we should, yeah, we should follow up with. Yeah, we should incorporate it as we go through. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Do you 
Do you want to have a group sing or something? <laughs> lead us in song? Uh, I can't believe it gets started. Okay. All right. We should all have a copy of this. Or, oh, our our in-person audience I won't have it, she though. Come on Zoom and we... Well, she could be on Zoom. Our in-person audience wouldn't see it. It's she not posted yet. No, maybe, 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 maybe. Um, no, let me. Share your screen, I bet it would take over the gallery. We could have. If, we'll see where Matt's at. Cindy, do you know who is controlling who can get in and who can get out now at this point? Is somebody, is Matt, without Matt there, if somebody was trying to get in? Chris is watching. Chris, can you, do we know who participant four is? Because I, I don't think we usually allow somebody in unless they actually put their yeah. name. Could uh, participant four uh, rename yourself, please? Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So on Zoom again, please, uh, participant four, please rename yourself. All right, I'm gonna put you in the waiting room, participant four, please rename yourself and we can let you back in. Yeah, you, that's, that's where you get trouble. When the housing diversity, that somebody comes in. Shall we begin? Ready? And I think it's as soon as Matt gets it fired up, we'll get it online, but we might as well start. We will we'll mention, for the people on Zoom, we currently are not on CETV, but we are um, in progress of bringing that up. We'll be soon, but I think we're ready. Let's. Are we ready to start? Okay, Yes, great. let's go. Great to see everyone again. It's been the... Uh, not that long since we've been together. Um, but I want to first thank everyone for the feedback. Um, we looked through all the comments we received um, and we have uh, responses, um, a lot of answers to them or when you will see the information. So we'll outline that tonight. Um, I know it seems like April 4th is really far away, no, it's um, but it's not. <laughs> Um, tonight, we really need to walk away with an understanding as to what we're including in these options. I need to get my cost estimator started on them tomorrow um, in order to maintain the schedule. So that's one of the reasons we really wanted to meet tonight is to try and have a understanding from everyone as to what is, what isn't included. I know the high school portion is a question. Um, I know there's some other questions in regards to scope. Um, again, we've answered as many that we can at this point in the process tonight. Um, and we also have feedback from the staff. We met with the elementary school staff, we met with the middle school staff and the high school staff since we met last. Um, we've collected feedback from all of them as well, so you'll have that information. Um, <clears throat> but uh, again, the agenda, the intent of the meeting is to get kind of the green light for scope for all options uh, for the pricing. Um, and we can talk about um, ways to be creative with pricing. If we get to the high school portion, we say, hey, we're not quite sure, but let's price all this so we can figure out what to fold in with these options. That can be a consideration too. Um, we're gonna go over your questions. We're gonna go over that chart we presented last time on the impacts or, or of the options and we're kind of calling it two things. It's what are they solving? What are the options solving? But also what is the impact? Because it's um, important to consider both. Um, in the questions, um, we received some requests to really look at down the road, if we were to pursue these options, what would the future look like? How do we um, maybe reuse certain portions of the building for different things? Or how do we, if you go with a renovation addition now, how do you replace the middle school later? How do you replace the elementary school later? So we have diagrams to walk you through that tonight um, and some other considerations. 
Um, we did talk um, about enrollment last time we arrived at, as we were reminded earlier, the six classrooms per grade. Um, I took the uh, what was agreed to at that time, the October 23 enrollment study that was the 3.3% from NASDAQ. We used the, that data. Uh, I've organized that in the slides tonight so you can see um, that continues to support the six classrooms but then have um, a lot of information for you guys to take a look at as to how we want to size what we call the core spaces. And so thinking about, um, as we think about these schools and thinking about core spaces, and what I mean by that is the cafeteria, the gymnasium, the library, those are the three major ones, there's a couple others, um, but determining the number of students you want to design that for today um, and talk about if you want to adjust the size of those one way or the other. Um, and then we'll also show ways to add classrooms in the future um, to have that flexibility. Staff feedback, we have detailed information from the band and chorus staff at the middle school. We'll go over what was shared with us compared to what is in the school today, compared to what is in the options, and compared to what is um, in the DOE guidelines. Um, and then if anybody has any breath left, we'll do some more discussion at the end. Um, I also wanted to um, let everyone know um, the topic about uh, um, circulation and traffic and pedestrian and uh, vehicular and bicycle has come up many times. So I've invited the civil engineer here tonight. When we get to that question, just to be able to speak about the process around that, questions that we have for all of you um, and talk a little bit more in detail about that. All right, here's the schedule. Um, I think many folks um, who are here in person and online are familiar with this. If not, um, the red arrow shows you where we are in the process. We have tonight's meeting. We will get back together on the 28th and then present at the forum on the 4th, the refined three options. Um, and then we'll have a couple weeks for community feedback. Um, and then it is narrowed down to one on May 2nd, and then that is developed for referendum. All right, we've already talked about this. We're gonna jump right into the questions. Okay, um, so we just took the Google Doc um, and we uh, summarized it. Um, if we've left something off, it's not intentional. Just let us know. Um, uh, we are trying to summarize and kind of combine like things. Um, but if you feel that something wasn't addressed, just by all means let us know and we'll, we'll add it back up there. Um, creative repurposing of the existing cafeteria. Um, so we are exploring this as part of the auditorium detail that we call it, and this um, full study is forthcoming. We will give some information tonight on preliminary findings that we have. Um, yeah, did you have a? Yeah, just on the cafeteria, um, I can't remember if we discussed it or not. How about the cooking, like the stoves, the refrigerators? Is that all part of the new design, or what we got now sufficient? Um, right, we're carrying new equipment in the cost estimate. We can go, as we get into the final design, we can evaluate, and at that point, we'll have our kitchen designers meet with your food service staff and understand, was there something that was just replaced that doesn't make sense to replace, or are there things that are beyond their useful life that just need to be replaced? Yeah. Um, master plan, or as we've kind of renamed it, future planning, because um, I know people were getting hung up on the word master plan. Um, do the new additions position us for additional construction in the future? Um, so I've said, um, essentially, we have those diagrams later. We will show you um, things to consider. Um, there are many different ways to go about it in the future, so we just put out considerations. Um, so we'll show you that later in the presentation. Construction duration and student relocation costs. So this is, these questions are on B, option B plus. We have a chart that shows estimated construction duration for all three options. For B plus right now, it's about 30 to 33 months. And we're currently budgeting for B plus and C minus two years of relocation costs. The placeholder is they're being relocated off-site. For example, Mahoney, we'd have to do some renovation to that to receive the students, minor things, but things that just need to be addressed, as well as leasing that. So right now in the budget, 3.7 million for two years is carried for two years of relocation off-site. Yeah. 
don't know if you can answer this or this is a Chuck or, or Mike question, um, but in your experience, can you carry those relocation costs in the cost of the bond or would that have to be paid um, through normal taxpayer expenditure? I don't personally know the answer to that question. I don't know if Mike we, or Chuck we, do. We, got, we did get an answer from... Uh, we did? Yeah, Matt, has that not been shared with the SBAC? It was in the finance materials. But but the, the legal counsel did indicate that we could carry that in a bond. In a bond. Excellent. Okay. I, 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 mean, I think there were two parts to it, though. You could carry it in a bond, or if it's a lease, then it's reimbursed through the school EPS formula. So... Yes, correct. There's, there's not in total, though. It's but not a portion of it. Okay. Yeah, it depends upon how you how you structure it, but it's it's in pl it's in play as an option. Um, so it depends upon how you want to work, and the DOE can make that determination if it can be included or not as a, as an allowable expense uh, to be used that way. So you can also do it as a lease purchase agreement. So you can do it for a shorter term. So instead of saying that you want to uh, uh, eat the elephant completely in the two years that you're paying for it, or do you want to say you want to, you know, as you would with other assets, you could do it in a shorter term on a lease purchase, so say a five-year or, or ten-year term, however you want to structure that debt. So there's different ways to do that versus just throwing it all immediately on your, on your operational budget. So I assume as we do the analysis for the funding, that'll be a consideration. Yeah, yeah that's one of the items. I have a question. Do we want to ask questions as we go, or do we want to wait till the end? I'm happy to do it whatever way you'd like. If it's relevant to what we're talking about. I'm so that $3.7 million, does that include busing? Because all our walkers are now going to become bus students, and our middle school and high school buses share, which means that they're going to have to basically be split yet again. We're now going to have three bus runs instead of two. Was that three point? Is that part of the three point seven million? The three point seven million is related to the building and the lease of that structure. So, I would ask the superintendent to come up with a number for transportation also, because that is going to be a big part. Because I bet you we're going to be short a bus and a bus driver when we come to the end, because we're going to have to yeah, think all those walkers. I think that's a good point, Patrick. And there's other cost cons uh, considerations that we'll have to figure out, um, and certainly. Uh, Cooperation with if it is Mahoney with South Portland Police and Fire. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of factors. Um, I've got a question for you, Chris. Yeah. On just it's not it pertains to this, but it really does. And when these kids are relocated, does that have any impact on them? And you know, I'm just wondering because I remember when we were kids, we were over here at the town hall while the school was over there, and we were I don't know we were just kind of looked at differently because we were here. And not over there. Does that? So does this relocation? Yeah, I, I think that's. Thanks, Dave. That that's a real consideration. Um, we're taking them from a school and a location in center of town, and potentially, I mean, it's not that far away, right. but it is a totally different school in a different town, and there are some uh, probably some emotional impacts, psychological impacts. So I, I'm taking that very seriously when I consider which option. Uh, maybe best for our current students. Um, but, I mean, you're already telling me your experience was tough and you were right here. So, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Have we gotten a yes or no from South Portland? No, we, we don't. In fact, uh, I think there was a news story today um, that uh, South Portland Town Council is touring Mahoney because... Um, when we, when we went, uh, they were saying they may use it to create their own city hall there. Um, it does have a nice auditorium. Uh, their own city hall and police department and fire department and bring them all together. So they're thinking of different options. They know we're interested, though. Yep. So right now, it provides us a monetary placeholder for whether it's relocation or the alternative would be bring portables on site um, to relocate students during construction. Um, cost of adding a performing arts classroom. Um, I wasn't sure how big this classroom needed to be, um, but one thing we can do when we price out the B plus option is carry it as an add alternate so that we have a dollar amount to be able to add it to that. I think, was that your question, Michael? Yeah. Are you thinking this is just a typical size classroom, like 800 square feet, or? Um, I think we'd have to confirm that okay. with, with, um, with, with the band directors or, Follow-up question I wish I had written was, 
with the uh, cafeteria space being converted, could that potentially be also used as a classroom space as mm. well as, you know? Yeah, we're, we're trying to look at all sorts of creative things in there. Um, it has its challenges, but there's also some potential for some creativity too. So trying to be flexible yet meet that need of the seating um, in there. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll circle back on that one. Um, and are we going to have more detail on the auditorium by April 4th? Yes, um, that analysis is underway and actively being studied. Can I go ask one other question? Yeah. When you do this presentation, is it going to be 3D modeling that we can look at what it's going to look like, or is it just going to be plan and section views? In the, in the theater, uh, we don't... No, in the overall, like when we give the presentation to the, to the um, people of Cape Elizabeth. On April 4th or at yeah. the final? We don't plan to have renderings on April 4th, no. Okay, all right. Um, essentially, we go forward with designing one, the final option, and providing the renderings and for that one. Will it be modeled, or? Will it be modeled? Yes. Okay. Yep. I mean, we'll have, it'll be high level. Um, it won't be final, you know, renderings that you would see in a, a final design. But yes, there will be things, uh, especially the exterior, so you can get a, a feel for the look and feel of the building. Yeah, I just think people get a better idea once, if we do that. Yeah, and it makes it feel more real, too. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Good. All right, so this is the um, draft, and I should have made the text a little bit bigger on this, but what this is is breaking down the three options, and, and there was the question asked, and it was repeated, I think, in every option, at least the first two, about construction duration. Um, and so this is our um, uh, thought process and strategy for the three options. So starting with B+, uh, if we look at just the middle school um, side of it, um, we break it into two um, staunches of renovation. So we do the middle school, we relocate the middle school students, we do 12 to 15 months. Um, so that is essentially a school year in two summers, uh, either a school year in one summer or a school year in two summers. Um, and uh, we do the additions um, in the middle school and what we call the spine. There's a lot of work kind of right along that um, admin area in the middle school. We refer to that as a spine along the gym area. Um, we create the alternate entry. Well, the, um, we create an alternate entry while the addition is being constructed. So you have to think about when we add that admin addition, we're gonna have to reroute all the students and staff to build that addition. Um, and the middle school students will be relocated. Um, relocating them off site in lieu of portables um, or doing a series of portables and, and breaking it into smaller sections of renovation is more efficient because we can move everybody out and we can do a wholesale you know, rehab of the building. Um, so then um, once that's done, the middle school students come back in, we move over to the elementary school. The elementary school students are either relocated off-site or maybe we keep middle school off-site and they're relocated into the middle school. Um, that's a, something we can discuss as we go forward. Uh, the amount of work in there is, is about 12 months. Um, and then on all of these, we focus on building first and then we work our way out of the site. Um, so site is tacked on at the end. There's site work going on throughout, but then there's a um, healthy amount of site work up that is completed and finalized at the end. So for B+, plus, and we put TBD for the high school, not knowing what that scope is quite yet, um, but for the elementary middle school, B plus right now with the scope that's in there is 30 to 33 months, including the site. Um, so we're talking about for the building itself, 24 to 27 months, um, and then another six for the site. And option C minus, um, more extensive renovation, there's more happening throughout the school. Um, and so the first um, part of the construction uh, is 15 to 18 months in the middle school. Um, those students are relocated. And then we go to the elementary school and that's another 15 to 18 months. And then the site work is about six to 12 months. Um, all of that season depending. Um, so this one is about 36 to 48 months. Then we get to option E3, which is building the new middle school um, and doing the elementary school renovations and removing the middle school. Um, to build the middle school, it's somewhere between 24 to 30 months. 
Um, that includes the amount of time for demo. Um, the elementary school work can be happening simultaneously because we will be able to um, do that level of work, at least in, in E3 right now, that level of work, um, a lot of it over summers and the additions can happen during the year. Um, so it's a smaller scope of work. Um, so those will be happening simultaneously. And then we'll have about 12 months of site work, um, uh, again, season depending. So we're about 36 to 42 um, for the new middle school and um, the renovations to the elementary and site work. But your students remain on site. When you put the contract together, do you have, will you put those like for I, milestones? I have to, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yep. Contractually, I have to. Okay. That way they, they know they're bidding on that duration and if they bid on the project and they sign that contract, they're signing up for that schedule. Okay. Um, so, Lisa, yes. Just to confirm on option E3, there's no relocation. The elementary school, you're saying they stay in school, yep. disrupting but limited internal scope. So I was just trying to. Yep, exactly. So we don't have that $3.7 million of relocation busing and all of that on this one. It's with building that new middle school, it's nice because we create that swing space. Even if, let's say that middle school got done in 24 months and we had to move a couple programs out, we still have the middle school up and running and we could use that as swing space if we had to as well. Um, so there's a lot more flexibility um, with that one. Yeah. When you're doing um, new construction, is, there, uh, is it ever possible to identify sections that can open at different points in time rather than a one fell swoop? Um, we can. Um, what we have found is we, uh, what we can't do is we can't control means and methods. We right. can't tell a contractor how to do their job. But what we can say in, you know, a contract is um, certain areas we would like turned over earlier. Okay. Um, and then once a contractor is on board, we can strategize with them as to, how are they gonna go about the building and what areas are they gonna start out that might be done sooner than later and that might adjust your thinking slightly but it might be even more beneficial. Um, we just need to make sure that we keep, the, we keep it as flexible so you get as good numbers as possible. Okay, great, thank yep. you. Good. Any other questions on this? All right, C minus, uh, master plan or long-term planning. How does C minus set the school up for the future long-term planning? Um, in addition to the question, there was a request, um, programmatic, request to do a programmatic exercise to test out what would happen in 10 to 20 years if the ne next SBAC decided to fully replace the middle school. And how many of the additions can be incorporated in a new middle school design without creating complex construction and student impact logistics? How many steps would it take to build and demo different wings in order to fully replace? I don't think we need cost applied to this, but more of a diagrammatic logistics exercise. And so I really appreciate the, the comment and thought around this. Um, we have diagrammed all of the, the options um, and it even um, going through that process again allowed us to even rethink how maybe we do E3 elementary school. Um, and I have another sort of sub option to just talk about to see if it has any merit because um, it may simplify how we go about this. Um, so we have those later in the presentation. We've put them with each of the options so sequentially we can kind of look at it all together. Um, and then construction duration, we've already answered that. So for C minus, it's the 36 to 48 and it's the same dollar figure, two years of relocation that we've budgeted for. Uh, we will have the auditorium detail on the fourth. <coughs> oh, bless you, Larry. Um, and <laughs> well, do not to sneeze. I thought we'd be in Zoom bomb for a second. <laughs> Sorry, Larry. <laughs> and then, um, how can the cafetorium be redesigned for maximum utilization for music program and additional meeting spaces? And again, that's currently being um, uh, explored. Um, and then we also, there was comments um, in, mixed in with questions and I just, I wanted to put them up here so everybody sees them and is, is just aware of them. Um, they, they conjure up great discussion. Um, the comment was that um, uh, this person doesn't like the separate middle school 
um, administration entrance. So to remind folks, there's two entrances proposed for C minus, one for elementary, one for middle school. Um, and the thought here on the comment was we give up too much, uh, we, we give up too much, it costs more, and the advantage is not enough to justify. So I uh, just wanted to honor that opinion um, that was shared. And then what is the cost for resurfacing the elementary gym? It's approximately 135,000 plus or minus, and that is included in the repair cost. Um, so that is in, in the scope. Um, e th any questions on C minus before I jump to E3? Can we, can we confirm the, um, the number of classrooms in C minus? across each grade? Six. Uh, I think s kindergarten is the exception, and we'll show you that later. There, we had done seven, and so going forward, we're gonna dial, dial that back to six. Oh, so there, there is a change? Um, I don't think the plan caught up with it, but as we refine it, we we're looking right now to see, um, as we right-size that kindergarten wing in here, in lieu of having a two classroom addition, if we only need one, we're trying to figure out where the best location is. Um, we know there's new play areas out there and other things to be sensitive to. We think where we had shown it, looking at all the photographs and the site plan, um, that that is out of that area. We just need to redo that pathway a little bit out there. On the end? Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Essentially, there's a reduction of one classroom from what we had been showing. Um, okay. E3. Um, traffic. Increase. Uh, so there's a question about traffic um, and whether, and sorry, we probably abbreviated this one too much. <laughs> um, if I remember the question, there um, uh, was questions about, we had the two entrances in E3, and so we had your, your one off of Scott Dyer right now and the new one that we've added that's right across from an existing um, drive, and you guys know the name of it better than I do. Um, it was, what is it? Hillway. 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 Um, there was concern that that was uh, gonna be a cut through. Um, interestingly enough, when I brought it back to the team, they said, oh, that's the way the GPS takes me every time anyway. <laughs> so in some ways, it seems like that's more of the, the through way. But um, in regards to traffic, I mean, it doesn't necessarily increase because you're not increasing your count. You're not increasing the number of students, you know, significantly from what there is today or, um, and so it's when we increase that to where it, it trips a traffic study or offsite improvements and things like that. If, if folks don't like the two drives, we can get creative and connect everything internally and, and not have it. Um, we just thought it provided another way to bring people onto the site, just have the elementary school queue and just have the middle school queue. Um, so that was essentially yeah, if I can make one more comment in that, yeah. living, living in that neighborhood too. The other concern that I think I would have if with, with a driveway there, giving the distance between that driveway to the intersection at Scott Dyer and Shore Road mm. and during commute times, you know, people trying to stop and make a left turn into that driveway mm. think, or, or people going straight at Hillway to get yeah. across that road, given the proximity to the Shore mm -hmm. and 77 intersection there, yeah. I, I think it could be. Concerns. Concerns, yeah. Did you want to add anything to that? Sure. Hi, Al Palmer from Girl Palmer. We're working with Harriman on the project. My wife and I moved to Cape in 2019. Through Matt's effort, I got recruited for the planning board and just started my second term. And then I've got a granddaughter who will be entering Pond Cove fall of 24 and another one in the fall of 26. From the traffic standpoint, they're all good comments and questions. They are all items that we would be looking at as the project progresses. I think as late as today, a new design for the intersection of Shore Road, Scott Dyer Road, and 77 was posted to the town website. So that intersection, I believe, is being discussed with DOT relative to improvements changes in alignment, changes in separation. 
try to address some of the issues that have been associated with that intersection over the last few years. And we would integrate with that to make sure that we address those items. If we needed to, we could look at keeping the existing driveway. One thing about the second driveway is it allowed us to kind of have that entrance to the elementary school be more prominent and not be hidden um, from a building standpoint. Because I think the first version, if you knew it where it was, you'd be fine. But if you were somebody new coming to the school, it would be, all right, where's the entrance to the middle school? And by moving it, we were able to get much greater visibility but that comes with potentially a second access point. We may be able to combine them all into one, and we'd want to meet with public safety when we do that, just to make sure we're addressing all of their concerns. Thank you. All right, the next one was about the elementary entry location. I think, I think we talked a lot about that. Um, continuing to explore, and you'll see in our new E3 for the elementary, we have, um, we are exploring a different location for the entry, um, and as Al mentioned, um, also looking at combining the drives on site. Um, master plan or long-term planning, show how new elementary school would work on site. There's a site plan um, that Al and his team provided us that will be in the PowerPoint later on to show you where, when we do a new middle school, where would the elementary or a elementary um, go? Um, on the site and what would that look like. Um, taking into consideration that would be built before the elementary school comes down because we would want to keep the kids in the school. Um, cost, is there a way to bring the price of the new middle school to less than 100 million and build out the construction with a plan for additional construction as needed? Yes, there is. Um, based on the cost estimates that we did for the seven options and looking at the new build of the middle school, based on the you know, square footage that it is today, um, and that's all subject to change as we go through this. The total rough order of magnitude cost is approximately 75.7 75 75 .7 million dollars, plus or minus, I'm gonna put all sorts of caveats on there. And for fully cooled with backup heat, a middle school would come in about 78.7 .7 million, so another three million, plus or minus. In that number, you have is all the site work in E3 that would be for the elementary and middle school, so there's a little bit additional site work, but you may decide that you want to do all those drives anyway. The demolition of the middle schools included, the abatement of the middle school and the elementary school, that estimate came in as a lump number, um, so that is in there, and then the middle school new build and the soft costs associated with that, that's all in that number. Um, so the answer to that is yes. Um, and then there's another cost question, and I, I wasn't quite sure what the ask was on this, but I took a stab at it and made some assumptions and read. It says, cost of new middle school, all repair and updating and nothing at Pond Cove. I, I assume all repair and updating is for the high school? Okay, perfect. So my response um, uh, speaks to that, and so we just went through what the, pre what the cost was for the middle school. Um, and then we provided a slide last week that went through all of the repair, the reno, and the additions for um, the high school scope. Um, so repair, renovation, and then the additions, uh, 27.1 million for the high school, plus or minus, um, if you were to do everything that was on that list. Um, <clears throat> the next question is creative. If rebuilding a new middle school, are there areas of existing middle school that could be preserved to provide additional space to the elementary school? We wanted that to work so badly. We looked at it so many different ways. One of the biggest challenges with this is that all of your systems come into your middle school and then are fed to the elementary school. So we kept trying to be like, well, if we just save this portion and we can keep this, the boiler room and this and the electrical and all of that, by the time we were done, we had no area left to really build in the future. And it actually became, it prevented us from being flexible going forward. Um, so it doesn't really um, allow us to do that many creative things. What we have done in some of the options is 
rebuilt that spine and we can kind of keep that spine for the music, art, uh, allied arts um, in that part of the building if you were to renovate it in the future. But, um, or consider it as swing space um, for any of the options as you go forward. Yeah, um, I guess, I, I guess, assume the answer is, is, is yes, that it is included, but con considering so much of the systems are currently existing in the middle school, I assume even removing pond coat costs, you are factoring in making sure the elementary school has systems. Yes, so in, you'll see in the table, it has become super expanded um, in the PowerPoint around the, um, uh, what we're solving and the impacts. Um, because our engineers went into detail to kind of address that. We need to create a new mechanical space in the elementary school. No matter what. Um, no matter what. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions on this yeah, one? Lisa, can yeah. you hear me? Larry, I can, Larry. Hi. Thank you. Um, I just want to just the clarification on, yeah. on the cost of the middle school only. Um, I just want to clarify, does that involve removing the repair cost for the high school? Uh, it, it's just the middle school cost. Right, so, so, so that would remove really everything from the high school, the repair cost, renovation, and any additions that are provided in, in either of the original three options? It's not saying it wants to remove it. The question was to provide a price for the middle school. So that's the price just for the middle school. Okay, so you would, so if you wanted to do repair, just repair at the high school, mm -hmm. you would you would add to that total 14.1 million? Correct. Okay, and and the addition, if you wanted to do, I'm sorry, if you wanted to do the reno, but not the addition, you'd add another 7.6 million? Correct. Okay, thank you. Yep. That middle school only cost would include the new mechanical for Pond Cove. It it would include. Um, we would. Ha I'll go back and look at that the mechanical room and rerouting that because right. those systems would have to be all done in right. that site anyway, and that's part of it's in the site number, part of it's in the mechanical and electrical number. What was the question? What was your question? So she was saying if, if because if we're building a new middle school, that right now the mechanicals are shared. So she'd be required to have a new mechanical room at Pond Cove. So I was verifying that the cost for the Pond Cove mechanical room was all included right. with her middle yeah. school. So all, all, the heat, all the heat, everything comes from, from the middle school to the elementary school. So that would have to be completely rerouted. rerouted. It all comes in one area. So we're looking at where to position that room. So it's, it's more of severing those lines than rerouting a bunch of that. It seems like that cost should definitely include the cost of new HVAC considering whenever you guys put it together. Like, we can't repurpose the systems, right, that are in the middle school right now. They're not. So if you're taking the middle school down and you're building a new one, you would have new systems in the new, middle school. Okay. Yeah. And you would have to create a boiler room in the elementary school to serve the elementary school. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess whatever that costs to make yeah. sure the elementary school has systems, I guess, has to... Yeah, and an there's some overlap in numbers. School. Like right now, I have all the you know abatement for elementary, and middle school. If we were to just break out the middle school, whatever was left over, you know that number for the elementary would more than likely cover that cost and and site and all of that. So, um, but we can go back and look. But that is definitely something you would need you would need to address um, to be able to have that building up and running. Other questions on this. Okay, um, this was what was in um, the uh, PowerPoint last week um, and the breakdown for the high school and the original options. Um, again, I think these numbers were asked for as well as um, a breakdown here in a minute um, on the renovations and the additions. Um, I think the feedback from the staff is really going to help you guys in, in helping to prioritize a lot of this. Um, some, some pretty strong feelings on some aspects of it um, and some pretty clear direction on, on others. Um, so I, I think we'll get there in a minute. Um, 
Cost for the field house at Hannaford Field um, presented last week, 2.9 million plus or minus. Um, and then also I want to just capture the comments that were in the high school section of the questions and comments. Um, there was multiple SBAC members that commented they feel we should remove the high school scope from the project. Um, one member voiced concerned about doing little to nothing at the high school and elementary after clearly identifying the need throughout the project. Um, does cost of elementary and middle school scope impact amount of scope for high school? Um, so essentially, this is one of the big areas we need guidance on is we've identified a lot of scope, we'll provide feedback on the staff, but we need to really kind of, prior, we need to prioritize tonight what items we want to consider in these options or are there additional ones that you want priced and it's gonna be more of kind of an a la carte, if you will, to uh, like a menu of what we then fold back in from the high school, depending on, on where some of these options come back. Um, and uh, with the improvement proposed to the high school, what would be the long-term operational savings? That's really hard to tell at this point because we're not clear on what the scope is. So once we define that scope better, there's some things that aren't gonna have an operational savings. Some of these things don't really relate to that um, and others may, um, so we'll have to look at that. Question. Yeah. Maybe it will come up later in the presentation, but will we have a chance to learn more about the, the, the proposed field house at the Hannaford Field? What, what that entails? Mm -hmm. um, it entails restrooms and storage and a snack bar. Or concession stand, I should say. Um, and there's a, there is, in earlier presentations, there was kind of like a mocked up plan, but we can From pull a, that back up. aerial plan I saw, was there? A, and, and even earlier, there was like a little floor plan that showed, okay. but we can. I missed that, sorry. That's all right, we can pull that back up. There's been a lot of data. <laughs> um, this is the list of items for renovation and addition. Um, we went through these with um, staff. Um, you'll see in their comments that several of them were very supportive of the acoustic issues between classrooms. Um, and uh, the library modifications, a lot of that had to do with creating a area for testing. Um, the requests um, from many was not to disrupt the library for that um, you know, limited time use and would prefer to see maybe an addition created for not only testing, but maybe even the Achievement Center could be out there, testing multi-purpose space, um, and then they can renovate that Achievement lobby area to be more of a gathering space. Um, there was also um, a couple other comments we'll go through um, as well, um, lots of questions about repair items and windows and things like that. Um, and I know um, a question came out last week about windows. Windows are part of the repair in all of the schools, um, as well as about 70% of the roofs at the elementary and middle school. Was that, was that, sorry, I'm so sorry if you Okay. An option in CE library modification through yeah. the classroom. Is that, net, do those items net out to 4.9 million? Is that, or no, what, what's the total of the, um, what's missing from B, I guess? What's missing from B? The, the 870 through the 310, the library modifications. The, yeah, so that wasn't in the original B. Right, I'm just, I'm, I don't have my calculator. And I can't. Oh, so it nets out to about this. I'm, yeah, I wanna go back to that table exactly. What number? Is that the difference between two, 1.9 and 7.6? Um, right. I, yeah, I'd have to add it up. Okay. But I mean, just looking at it, you got th three that are a million plus. Yeah, I'll... yeah I just wanted to table on the previous, I was just trying to. Yeah, I rounded to the nearest 5,000 on this just to get yeah, the yeah, numbers. Yeah, yeah. Um, this does really clearly show the it increased cost of B oh, it's very good. C. Yeah. yeah. A lot of that increased cost is all the additional stuff we're doing at the high school. 
The additional stuff and, and more renovation too, and, and I will, when you get to see, um, at our last meeting, um, there was a error in the square footage for C that we've modified for tonight. It wasn't showing all the renovation areas, so you'll see that number has increased because there's a lot more going on in the classrooms in C2. So that's another portion of that increase in cost. But yes, the high school component is, is a big, the big jump because it was um, essentially a lot of that renovation there got tripped in when we went to those next tiers of, of um, priorities. That adds up to roughly 4.6 million, the library modifications to the science room improvements. Okay, 4.6. Can you, can you refresh my memory on athletics and new field house? Mm -hmm. What are we getting for 2.4 and 2.9? 2.9 is the new field house out by the Hannaford field that right. we have restrooms, storage, and the concessions building. So it's a standalone building out there. It's about 2.9 million for that. Um, the athletics are additions to uh, right along uh, or near um, the gymnasium. There's a fitness center, there's a health yep. room. I believe there's storage and maybe even some officials' offices. Does that addition uh, include right sizing for Title IX? That is in... That's uh, locker room, 515. That's locker room? Yeah, locker room, yep. That's all it would cost to fix that problem. There's, there's not a lot to fix. It's Let's do it right now. It's not necessarily a square footage. <laughs> it's really in... Um, Aesthetics. Aesthetics, yeah. So Lisa, what does the theater... The, that's the first time I've really seen a number for the theater improvement at the high school. What does that entail? Um, that includes uh, a lot of that has to do with the seating, replacement of the seating, and... Um, Anything with acoustics? Acoustics, maybe even addressing some of the storage issues, um, and I think something to do with the thrust as well. I can get you more detail on that. I just can't call it up on, off the top of my head. Oops, I didn't mean to change slides there. Acoustics are not... So good there. Pretty bad, actually. Any other questions on this one before we move on to the general questions? How would we, as a, this is an SBAC question, how would we, how are we going to go about deciding this? How, how do, what's our approach? Do you want to go to the high school feedback? Well, definitely. I think but, you have a lot more to present. Yeah. I'm not saying we're this second. I'm just curious, like, what are how, how are we going to approach? I think we want to hear what do the staff have to say, and that really should Absolutely. guide us in many ways. Okay. Um, and then we have to consider, or I have to consider what SIPs are in our operating budget could potentially accomplish over several years and that sort of thing. So. Understood. I do think that this conversation is really applicable. We have to take it back to survey development because... Uh, it's again, we have a vote, we could end up with an option that's tens of millions of dollars less than what we're gonna ask people to to vote on. Or, you know, you kick the can down the road, we might not have this opportunity for another decade, right, to address some of these things. So, it's a, uh, I agree. Yeah. And, and with the high school scope, I mean, we need to decide that. I think there's, Yes, I think there's other though, also from the, the Chris end of things, like what does Dave think from this list can be folded into the CIP costs? That it would also be very impactful to know. Right, and as of right now, that is $500,000 a year for all of our schools. Now, right. Whether CIP can slowly be increased to help offset some of these is a discussion for another time through the school board and eventually town council, but go ahead. I say that we, and this is probably a bit premature, but uh, I say that we look at uh, doing um, high school as part of a bond when we do the town hall, which will be a couple years out. Just a thought. So let's carry on, I think. Yeah. And Lots to think we'll about. Revisit as we learn more tonight. So, the general questions: Will estimates for each option include projected savings in energy and maintenance cost? Um, this is a, this is a tricky one. So, we are possibly adding areas of cooling. We are possibly changing square footage. We are possibly completely adding cooling. 
or properly ventilating spaces, you may actually have increases in areas um, because you're not achieving the right ventilation rates or there's a decision to cool. So we can provide the information, but I want, I want folks to understand that there isn't always a savings per se because we need to, do, to bring things up to the right level first. Um, but we can provide um, uh, uh, estimates on um, uh, the amount of uh, energy usage for the different designs, and I know that our engineering team has been, been working to get, uh, I think Larry had requested um, the kilowatt hours for heating, um, and I know um, that they're working to pull that together for the different options. Um, so we can definitely provide that. Um, maintenance costs, we would have to sit down with, with Dave and have a little bit more conversation to kind of get a better handle on, on what those would be. Um, holistic view of traffic, bicycle, pedestrian flow in each plan. Um, I'm going to invite Al back up to speak on that one. Thanks, Lisa. As Lisa's discussed with you, we're progressing from proof of concept. Can we fit all of the large items on the site that we need? Busing. The buses take up a certain amount of physical space. It takes so much space to turn them. We can't interchange those items with other items. So we're progressing past what I'll call proof of concept that we can provide most of the programmatic elements on the site that you're looking for with the exception of a few field items and going into the refinement of the concepts now on the items that we can, we have more flexibility relative to um, how do we fit those on the site. We need over the next week to interface with staff on a few items, such as under the current operation, it appears that pedestrians are leaving the buildings at several locations uh, versus just at the main entrances. Is that something that would happen in the new buildings? The enter primary entrances are now kind of settled down, they're not moving anymore, but if there's gonna be potential that have students leaving through multiple points, we just need to coordinate that so we can verify and have adequate access. Shared paths or walks. Today, the Scott Dyer driveway has a walkway on the, I'm gonna call the westerly side. That's being used kind of as a shared bike and peds. Little kids are leaving the school riding on that sidewalk, kind of wobbly, not the most ready yet for prime time on biking with their parents. A five foot sidewalk is not adequate. That we're gonna look at going eight to 10 feet, possibly separating it. And as long as we know all of the bikes are gonna be exiting at one location, then we could potentially keep that to an eight to 10 foot path, have other paths, say going up towards um, Hill Way, may only be a five foot path if we don't think that bike users would be going in that direction. One item that we want to talk about with staff, or a couple items, are one of the heaviest pedestrian movements that we've observed is students leaving both the middle school and the elementary school and appearing to progress towards the high school. So presumably programmatically, there are some elements in the high school that they are going to, because that's where they seem to be migrating. I think it's the aftercare at the community services. And there are some after school programs that take place in the high school. Musical theater is, is a high school program, I think. Robotics too. Robotics. Robotics, yeah. So the heavier movement seemed to be towards the high school versus the community center. Um, well, a lot of the, well, the community center kids go down to the playground that first. is nestled next to the high school. That's frequently the first stop for the, okay. for the community center aftercare groups. Depends what time of year. It depends on a lot of things. Do, do the kids still come from the park up through Hannaford Field, up through the tennis courts? Do the kids still travel that way? They do, and concept E3, that is gonna be a question on getting barrier-free access. If we need to have barrier-free access, we'll probably have one direction 
for students that maybe have the ability to use stairs, and we're gonna have to have a separate access to meet ADA requirements. We wanna talk to staff over how feasible is it going to be for them to maintain a large set of exterior stairs on concept to E3 in the winter time. Currently, you've got stairs to the tennis courts, but if there's two feet of snow, obviously the tennis courts aren't gonna be used the same amount that stairs going to the middle school may be used. So we need to refine some of those items so that we have agreement with staff on where students are entering and exiting the buildings, understanding that programmatically, where their destinations are. They seem to be going a nice weather in one direction, a little less nice weather in a different direction, how that impacts the staff's ability to, to maintain those paths in the winter, how we incorporate those um, all into those final plans, again, at a concept level, but show those different directions that they're coming and going, potential to come through Jordan Way along the sidewalk on the police station side of Jordan Way, connecting all of those together so that there is an integrated plan to address it. The one thing we know about kids, no matter how much we encourage them to go one direction, they will go that more or less shortest path between two points mm -hmm. and with a few off track movements. Chris, I was wondering with the buses, if you're, you're talking about buses and where they're stored, uh, did, did, is there any use in telling them about, that? like we're exploring maybe being a part of like a, a, a pilot program like two or three years from now where we're gonna get electric buses and they might have to put in a transformer or something? I guess just so you know that, so you don't make any decisions that might. That wouldn't be on, on our site here. That would be down at Public Works. Oh, okay. Well, then never mind. Yeah, the time it would take to charge a bus definitely would want to be at Goldcrest, yeah. down in that area. Um, I would recommend, maybe you have, but if you haven't already, uh, to also speak with Susan Frost, who's program coordinator at the Community Center. Kelly, maybe, Finney? Kelly Finney also, and Susan Frost certainly, but Susan has her pulse on all the different programs where the, where the youth are, uh, including on weekends, and um, probably knows more than anyone with where, where children are coming and going seven days a week. So. One. The, the campus, too, in the summertime is also used for rec camp. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rec camp, yeah. She, Susan would... Yeah. Actually, that. Yeah. we should uh, think about rec camp relocation costs. If, if it was still a program that we were going to offer in the summer, having to find a new place to have it. It'd probably the, be at the high school gym or something like that. Yeah. We just, I mean, I don't know. Anyway, that's... One other thing, you might want to talk to Jay, the public's work director, because for snow plowing and stuff, they got the bigger tractors that can't get in in certain areas right now, so just pass some stuff by. Yep, him. we're coordinating with Jay. One of the areas we have questions on is there's the path, the, I'll call it the newer path between the baseball field and the soccer field, cross field. It's got a number of switchbacks on it. Um, works great in the summertime. A lot harder to do snow removal in the wintertime, and if that's gonna be a primary movement, we may need to soften some of those curves so that they, depending on what they have for equipment. So we wanna make sure that to the most greatest extent possible, we're designing to the equipment they currently have and not having to spend unnecessary funds on new equipment because of a design choice relative to switchbacks or things like that to accommodate the grades. And, and Al, on the switchbacks there, those were ADA requirements that we had to do and we put that in uh, four years or so ago because we originally it was a pretty good run, but uh, that was a no-no. Right. <laughs> so that's why we had to uh, correct But that. trying to do snow removal on that it's switchback. A it's a bear. Right. It's a bear, yeah. A lot of probably tearing <laughs> things up and all that. I will say, fixing that sidewalk on Scott Dyer, I think would be a massive improvement. I used to bring my kid down to the daycare 
down that road and driving by those little wobbly kids. Like I would frequently be very nervous. So okay. very, I think that is a risk. Good. Thank you, Al. Excellent. All right, moving through the next questions. What are the hidden costs of renovation that are not included with new, uh, that are not included with new construction only? Um, in parentheses, modular rental, construction scheduling are on active cam cam campus, hazardous material testing, design, construction fee differences. Um, so with the renovation addition, like we went over before, modular rental or relocation costs um, are in the renovation addition only. Construction scheduling around active campus, design and construction fee, um, it, it will be in both of them, it will be higher in your uh, renovation addition. Um, the hazardous material testing and abatement will be included in all options. Um, by law, um, the school district has to do an impact uh, survey. We've already started to get that process going to, and that's how we got the budgetary number uh, for abatement. Um, but if we uh, are removing a building like the middle school for E3, we have to have an impact survey and it has to be in um, the documents so that the contractor knows where they've been identified. But things do come up, so building on that, the next, you know, the full extent of hazardous materials, we're not going to know. We're going to get the best we can with the testing we can do and the existing drawings we have, but we're going to open up walls and we're going to find stuff. I can see you smiling, Patrick. We've been through this together oh. and it was painful um, and very costly. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so if it's transite, are you going to bother with it, like transite floors that might have asbestos in them? Well, if we're demoing the building, we have to abate it. Okay. Yeah. And where did you plan on using for a staging area during um, construction? Business? We'd have to we'd have to look at that when we get down to the final, depending on what the final option is. Um, a lot of times we can use um, uh, different hardscape areas and kind of redirect uh, parking or uh, maybe play areas that aren't in use at that time um, okay. or things like that. All right. Thanks. Yep. <clears throat> or if Patrick wants to let us use the fire station parking area. <laughs> um, so yeah, there are gonna be things that are, are unforeseen. And there are other unforeseen conditions that we just, again, won't know about. We typically run into more of them in addition renovations, um, just because we are opening things up, we're making connections. Um, but there's the potential we run into, into them in new construction too, things like unsuitable soils. As many test boring pits as we do, there might be an area that we hit that has an unsuitable soil, which is what the contingency is there for to cover that. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Um, Absolutely. I know that the architectural fees are dictated by the state, I think. Yes. And I'm not sure if contractor fees are as well. Um, contractor, there's, uh, in regards to their markup fee, there are, but those, the architectural one, architectural engineering are. Oh, okay. Because I think usually for renovation, you add like 2 to 2.5%. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Also? Correct. Okay. Give or take, depending on the, uh, the size and cost of the project. Okay. And then I know also I haven't done a lot of bid, bid projects, but um, in, in addition to having a larger contingency, I assume the contractor would. Do they also add something to their fee for renovation? Um, I haven't seen a specific... Add, we just see it come up in the overall cost. They will mark up the overall cost because of the complexity of a project. When it's a clean new build, the numbers are more competitive because it's easier. Um, but um, to speak to the engineering and architectural fees, it, there is a higher fee for renovations than there is new builds because it's more complex. Um, <clears throat> answer to questions uh, that were brought up before, um, Yes, the repairs do include, um, I think I mentioned this before, new roofing, or not all new roofing, but areas that need to be replaced at the middle school and at the elementary school. And depending on which option, we either back those numbers out because parts were going away or we kept them in. Um, and there is window replacement carried in that number as well. Other question, we need to get the full committee, the CIP report that was developed by Herman to begin discussions of how to proceed to the best option. Knowing the cost of, for specific repair system replacement is very important in our consideration. Some of this need, uh, this, some of this could need replacement ASAP. Um, we are uh, modifying a couple things in there. There was a snafu with the spreadsheet. 
we, we will share that with everybody that wants to see it. Um, it, it's not a CIP report. It was essentially building off of the Colby Simon um, uh, study that they did, verifying the things that they reported on, um, and then adding things to that that then would fold into the different um, scenarios. It is listed like a CIP. It can be used for that data. Um, I just want to be clear that that was not the original um, intent of that document. Um, and that is actually in the report that we sent back in December. Um, so if people want to get their hands on it, all that information is in there, um, but has been developed since then. Um, we have included in the repair number all the items that fall under zero to three years and three to six years in their repair. Um, and so note that with a successful fall 24 referendum, construction would start in late 25, early 26. So that's still within that zero to three year of those repairs. Um, after all the conversation about accurate enrollment projections, we settled on the need for six classrooms per, uh, I think that's supposed to be per grade level, with some limited extras for flexibility. How many do we have now? Um, I'm sorry this table is so small. I threw it in at the last minute because I was still confirming it and it was not intended to be such small text. Um, <laughs> I will enlarge that, but this is essentially what you have for the grade levels, K through four. Uh, you have six kindergarten, seven first grade, six second, six third, and five fo fourth grade for a total of 30. Middle school, you have five. You have, in fifth grade, you have six. Sixth grade, you have five. Seventh grade, you have six. Eighth grade, you have six for 23. This does not include your world language, your SPED, and other programming spaces. So those those are additional classrooms. What are additional? The classrooms? world, the uh, whole language, or the world language, are additional classrooms. Though those are additional programs, but they're not grade level classrooms. But we have those classrooms. We have those, yes. Yeah, okay, yep. that's my point. Yep. No, and we essentially are creating the space for those and the new designs of the programs that you have. You have five world language in the middle school. I think you have two in the elementary. And then it's harder to count off the top of my head the SPED programs, but we've accounted for all those as well. And so what we've done, when we've been saying, and I think it may have been confusing, a six plus one or a six plus two, essentially we're giving you six classrooms, but it's where we're putting the world language and where we're putting the special education. So let's say you have one year, the let's say first grade needs seven classrooms. Well, we move that world language let's say to the second grade that only needs five that year, we just move that word language upstairs, so we free up that as that extra classroom for first grade. So same, same number, it's more of the organization of how we're creating those neighborhoods. I think I just reiterated everything that was in that response. Any questions on this? Are we undersized for special education rooms right now? Because some of those special education rooms yes. are used to be closets when I went to school. Yeah, you have some that were um, the end of a hallway, a door was put up and there's a small space for people to meet. Um, there's just some inadequate spaces um, in, in there. There's some that are in, um, there is a couple, uh, you have a world language space that is in a windowless room that's not sized for a full classroom. Um, and there's several other um, programs that just aren't in appropriate spaces. And so that's one of the major things that we're trying to address. We, we can't get them all to the, the uh, guideline size in the renovation additions. Um, we can in, in the new build for the middle school, um, but there's gonna be um, trying to make those adjustments the best we can to provide appropriate spaces for those programs. Yep. Okay, this is the end of the questions. Um, a tour of the school would be helpful to help understand the current situation. I do not yet see the need for additional classrooms. Um, so we're not providing additional classrooms. I think the only additional classroom that popped up was in the kindergarten. We w went from a six to a seven um, in analyzing the um, numbers. Um, we've moved that back down to a six, um, but you need to right size those, which then throws you into an addition. You need the square footage to get those fully sized to six. And so that, that's where that addition comes in at kindergarten. 
Um, we are having building tours on April 6th. Saturday, excellent. So Saturday, plug. April 6th at 9 a.m. at Pond Cove in the middle school. All right. April 6th. It's building tours. Um, Official. Official. What time? 9 o'clock. Perfect. So continuing with the answer, whatever dollar number we arrive at um, that we think can get voter approval needs to go where it can have the biggest impact. If needed, classrooms can be added if a bubble happens or temporary use of a portable can be considered. Right now, for the next four to five years, we are looking at years of declining enrollment. So I agree we can add classrooms if we see something come up, but we're trying to be creative with the way we lay this out to where we can just relocate spaces within the building to adjust for those bubbles. Um, I think giving us flexibility like that is very important. Yeah. Because yeah. you never know. I mean, you don't know who migrates in, who migrates out, what happens. Yeah. Where does IT come into this? Like, I, I think um, Larry mentioned it earlier that you know, yeah. IT is going to be a big part of this. Absolutely. Thing. What are we doing with that? So in our rough order magnitude square foot for things, we, we carry you know a dollar amount for that, but we are in the process of meeting with the technology director. Um, our uh, tech, uh, advance is who we work with. They are a educational technology consultant. Um, we are meeting on the 26th at 11 with the educational uh, with the technology director, advance, Harriman, and the OPM to go through um, understanding in more detail what is in the building, what's working, what isn't, and how we position you guys best for future technology and these options. What do you um, see like an IT room for, with everything in it? Like all the buildings I've built, we have IT rooms. Oh yeah, yeah, so you'll have, typically what we have, um, we actually have multiple. Because the buildings are so big and the cat wires can only go 200 feet, we have the main distribution frame, um, and so that will be in, in one location, and that, that's kind of that's the brains, right? And then every 200 feet, we have to have an intermittent distribution frame because that's where the connection needs to be made. So when we lay out our buildings, uh, trust me, my engineers are on me all the time about making sure I have enough IDF and MDF rooms and where they're located, and they're usually located at the beginning of a classroom wing, because then we can get the runs, or in the middle. And we make sure, as much as possible, all those system spaces, like electrical, data, mechanical, are serviced from the hallway. So service providers can come in, do their maintenance, and never disturb the classroom. Yep. All right. I'm not gonna go through all of this because we'll be here all night. <laughs> but what this is, is really this, you know, I, we've heard loud and clear that we want to be able to summarize the differences between these options, what we're solving for, what the considerations are, understanding there's a lot of conversation last time about are we reusing electric, are we not reusing electric? Um, in, in a lot of these options, we're recommending that you separate your utility feeds. It sets you up the best in the future. Um, so being able to separate those, right now you have one um, that feeds the middle school, being able to separate and a lot of these options we need to anyway, the middle school and electrical feed. Um, and then um, other things around uh, your, you know, thinking about needing to provide a new transformer and incoming utility line to the high school and some of these options as well. Um, but this is, this is a list. Um, I don't know if you want me to just touch on a couple of things. If folks kind of want to just take a minute and skim it over and ask questions. Um, was your point you just made that that gives you more flexibility in the future? Yes. Okay. Yep. So we'll... Because we don't run into the problem we have right now with not being able to do certain things because that's there. It might be buried in there somewhere, but on emergency generators, yeah. are you just going to have one or are you going to have numerous ones in each section? It depends on what you want to do. So if we're doing full building, right now you have a generator that backs up your buildings, right? right. Um, if you go to full building cooling, you're going to need more than just that size generator. Okay. Um, and especially if we're doing VRF, it's a pretty heavy electric pull. Um, 
So we'll have to understand what you guys want to do. If, it's, if the generator wants to be able to run the building and you don't miss a beat and school is going, that's one pretty big generator. If it is life safety, life safety systems, which is what we as kind of a base do, um, then that's a smaller generator. Um, so it, it's really gonna be driven by uh, if there's full building cooling or not, and if this backs up the whole building. Thank you. Yep. And if people have thoughts or comments on that, or there's a standard that you've set already, those are good to know too. Uh, Lisa. Yes, uh, Larry. Um, you had given us an estimate in the last report of approximately $2 million for retrofitting the elementary school and the mid middle school with a full VRF heating and cooling system. And if we did that, um, we would be, be creating a, a large amount of electrical load yeah. that could potentially be serviced by a second photovoltaic uh, field at the, at the landfill that we've been looking at, which we've discussed in previous meetings of the Finance Committee, and we've worked with um, uh, Richard Parker from the, uh, from the Town Energy Committee. And I believe we should you know, seriously consider adding that to the B plus option and to the C minus option. Um, this is really our only opportunity uh, that we'll probably have going forward for the schools to actually be part of the solution in reducing carbon emissions. And um, I think we need to take that opportunity uh, because those uh, subsidies are available from efficiency main and it'll give us um, the resources I think to reduce it to a reasonable cost and also, of course, give us potential use of facilities during the shoulder seasons and during the summer in both of the schools um, if, if we go with the renovation or, or even E3 with, the, with one of the other schools. But in any case, I just want to you know, say that this is a really critical decision, I think, that needs to be made. And I don't think it's one that can be easily done later. It'd just be a lot more complicated to add a system such as this. Thank you, Larry. Yeah. Yeah, I, we, in the last estimate, and we had broken out the cooling separately, we can do that again as we move forward so you have an independent cost for what that is. Um, we can ask our estimator to show us what, you know, because as these refine and everything, just make sure we get that dialed in um, and then fold it into the total um, when you present that information uh, to, to the public. We can go that route if folks would like us to. Okay, thank you. Yep. And I, you said B plus, C minus, and then you also said E3. I assume that you would also want to see that added to the elementary school in E3? Yes. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's uh, really important. If we're going to do this, this is the time to do it. And so that the town through its schools can make a really large uh, contribution to reducing carbon emissions and meeting the town's climate plan, which we will uh, be receiving this summer. But we know that by 2050, we're supposed to be carbon zero uh, based on the uh, GP COG uh, template that's being used by the local communities. Mm -hmm. yeah, and to your point, Larry, I mean, that's how you're going to really be able to get the most efficiency out of, out of these. Um, any of these solutions is by going that route, especially if you have the PVs to offset it. Right. Good. All right, I'm gonna to go to the next slide unless there's questions on this one. And I'm just gonna kind of go the same route on all of these. If there's something I see that maybe I wanna emphasize, I will, but kind of leave it up here for folks to digest, um, ask questions. Um, and we kind of, we broke it, broke it down in kind of either one priority or three priorities per, per slide. Um, so it's easier to read. I can't remember, Lisa. What did we do with the people that are bringing like the deliveries to the cafeteria and stuff that what? back hallway, what are we doing? With so in B plus and C minus, when, yeah, when we make that addition, yep. 
Um, they're pretty much coming off Scott Dyer Road. That parking lot you have right there, we, we extend it with a service, service road to the back of the kitchen. So there are no, in all of these options, you no longer have somebody walking through the school for deliveries. Yeah, we heard, heard that come up in a couple of the staff meetings too. Okay. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next. Um, so right size functional needs. This is probably the area that expanded the most. Um, we had the design team go back and, and really comb through the options to identify um, what, what was happening from a right sizing um, and functional needs in each of the options. We broke it down by elementary school and middle school. Um, and so uh, B, B plus um, in the elementary school uh, grades first through third, um, those classrooms remain undersized compared to the state guidelines of 800 square feet. Your fourth grade is at that 800 square foot, um, uh, some slightly below, some slightly above. Um, and all classroom um, are accounted for in the B plus um, model. The kindergarten and the flex classroom, um, uh, that sixth classroom will be located in the first grade wing where the old admin was and all of your kindergarten classrooms will remain undersized in the B-plus option by about 20%. Special education spaces are all accounted for. Um, they are not uh, a full-size classroom space um, like we've been able to do in some of the other solutions to provide more of that flexibility. Um, as many as we could get close to that, we have. We've also tried to co-locate those in a grade level wing, but it didn't always work out in the existing building. So for example, the first grade SPED resource will be located on the second floor. Um, RTI will have a, a suite of offices, and essentially that's just a way of saying they have a space where they all have a place to land. Um, and that will be above the cafeteria um, and it actually is an efficient use of square footage. We put them all together in one room, they can collaborate together, and then they can go to the classroom grades and push into a smaller space with students to give the um, instruction they need. Um, the third grade, um, right now that wing is missing a small group room. So the model is trying to get a small group room, that's where we're meeting with two to five students, and a one-on-one -on -one space in each each neighborhood, classroom neighborhood, to be able to provide these special education services or um, the RTI um, services in that way. Jumping over to C minus for the elementary school, um, uh, most of the first through third grade classrooms are again under the state guidelines of 800 square feet um, with the exception of the fourth grade and in this one the exception of the kindergarten because we've right sized the kindergarten in C minus um, and, and added the addition to get the full size six classrooms. Um, all classrooms are accounted for. All grades have a dedicated one-on-one -on -one and small group room in the grade level classroom wing or very close by. Um, special education spaces are accounted for. RTI will have a, a suite of offices similar to B plus above the cafeteria and they will have their pull out to one-on-one -on -one and small group rooms. Renovations to toilet rooms will occur um, to get counts and ADA um, needs addressed. Um, and we're gonna take the approach of single stall restrooms. In option E3, um, at the elementary school, um, most of the first through third grade classrooms are under state guidelines of 800 square feet, except for the fourth grade and all are accounted for. Currently in this, um, uh, iteration of E3 elementary. The kindergarten flex classroom um, will be located where the admin was and the kindergarten um, is shown to remain um, under by 20%. We can also do an add alternate on this one to show the cost to add that to E3 if that's something that you want to um, explore. Um, special education spaces are all accounted for. Fourth grade wing, um, SPED is undersized. RTI is split between two 600 square foot rooms on the second floor. 
Um, and the first grade wing is missing a one-on-one -on -one room as well as the second grade wing. The third grade wing is missing a small group room and the fourth grade ring, wing is, has a one-on-one -on -one and small group rooms are located outside the library area, which is adjacent to the fourth grade wing. Before I move on to middle school, any questions on this slide? Okay, middle school. Middle school for B plus, most grade level classrooms are under state guidelines of 800 square feet, um, but all, all are accounted for. Um, there is one world language classroom that is undersized and remote from the classroom areas. Special education spaces are accounted for. The Beacon program will still need to be located on the lower level. Fifth grade is missing a small group room and a one-on-one -on -one room is remote. Um, in the fifth grade wing right now, there are no toilet rooms located in the wing. Um, there are some outside a little bit further down um, and there's no teacher work room in that wing either. Um, all of the accessory spaces for the fifth grade are located down by the old admin and art area. There's uh, one dedicated conference room for admin and it is remote from the new admin. And renovations to all toilet rooms to get counts up to ADA needs addressed. Um, and there's a net loss of one teacher workroom in this option. And the shared elementary middle school option B and C converted toilet room uh, to a mother's room located near the gym and stage area. And option C minus, middle school, most grade level classrooms are under the state uh, guidelines of 800 square feet, but are all accounted for. Uh, still have that one world language classroom remote. Um, uh, a couple similar items to the B, B plus model. Special education spaces are accounted for. The Beacon program uh, is located on um, the second floor of the 1934 building, so it's come up from the lower level. Um, and the fifth grade is missing um, the toilet rooms in the wing and the one-on-one -on -one and small group, and the teacher workroom is located out by the main, um, the main wing. I think it's supposed to say main office. Um, renovations to all toilet rooms to get counts up to ADA and needs addressed. Sixth and seventh grade staff to share current sixth, sixth grade work, uh, teacher workroom. Um, current, there's a work storage room that is in between all the classrooms. It's kind of right in the center. That has been removed to be able to get that collaboration space in the C minus model in um, the seventh and eighth grade areas. Um, so it talks about displacing those. We've displaced the eighth grade work storage room is now located um, where the current, there's a current costume storage room up on the second floor of the 1934, or third floor of the 1934 building. So looking to renovate that into a teacher work room. Um, and- so Lisa, just to clarify, yeah. for the middle school in B plus and C minus, all of the classrooms remain the square footage they are today. Correct. Okay. They all remain the square footage they are today. The major difference between B plus and C minus is in C minus, we have more of a renovation happening in the classrooms in regards to um, kind of wholesale finishes. Uh, flooring happens in B plus. And then in C minus, in the elementary school, the structure allows us to remove a good portion of the wall between the classrooms and go back in with a uh, movable wall to have that agile, flexible space. Um, and um, we can do that in the fifth grade room in the middle school. We cannot do that in the sixth and seventh, sixth, seventh and eighth grade classrooms due to the bearing walls that are there. We've analyzed the structure with our structural engineer and we're able to impact about three feet of that structural wall. So we could get what we call a man door, a just regular door to connect the classrooms in between. Thank you. Chris, could you can explain a little bit for me both at the elementary level and at the middle school level, how do you go about deciding when you're gonna have a class of 20 kids or 22 kids, and when you're gonna, maybe, as opposed <laughs> to having smaller classes like we have, like at, at the elementary school level, we have three classes that you could easily make into six classes at a level. You could make them into five classes, still be within your guidelines, but you haven't chosen to do that and if you did that, you'd, at the middle, elementary level, you'd have three classrooms that would be available. So I, I just don't know 
when we're going through this analysis and it, we're talking about an, an additional classrooms that's needed, you've got at one level that's got 16 kids in it next year that could, if you had five classes as opposed to six, you'd be at 20 kids in the class. I think still within your, your guidelines, so in going through the district leadership team presentation, it, it says that you, you've, done, you've got one class that's gonna be 16, two that are gonna be 18, it, but you're out of, you don't have any classes available. So I, I know that's not an easy decision for you to make. It may dis, you may de, need to make decisions with teachers, contracts, and whatnot. But when we're going through this kind of an analysis, uh, it does kind of beg the question if we had, and part of, I think, the reason you do it is, as Lisa has identified, these classes are smaller than the DOE guidelines. But that's a question that I do hear from time to time. Why do we have... We've got guidelines of 20 to 24 in some of these cases, but we have classes with 16 or 18, and, and it's creating a classroom crunch for us. How do you go about making those kinds of decisions? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. Um, our fundamental purpose is to provide the very best education we can for our students, and lower class sizes enables teachers uh, to have more time with smaller groups of students or one-on-one -on -one in classrooms. So it really provides a better learning environment, provides more opportunity for the teacher to work with each of those individuals. Because every student you add obviously adds all the needs. And one of the things we also look at is not just the number, but we also look at the student needs in each of those grades. Are there any particular grades that need another teacher because of student needs are higher than, than other grades. So we really think about it. Uh, we take it seriously. Um, and obviously, uh, with building constraints, there are tough decisions sometime when you have to potentially reduce a teacher. But that, that's not uh, something we do lightly. Um, well, and everything you say, I don't necessarily at all disagree with. Yeah. But what I, what I hear is then the school policy should be that our policy is to have classrooms with 16 to 20 kids in them. If we rarely go over 20, but our school policy is 20 to 24 in some of these levels, why not change the school policy, recognize that the taxpayers have been okay with that and we're willing to support that, but then build classrooms that are based on what is a classroom with 16 kids what, what does that need, or a kid yeah. classroom with 18, and, and not have both, don't have a, have a policy where we're doing 16 to 18 and building classrooms for 20 to 24. That's a question that I get from time to time. Because yeah. the 800 assumes up to 24 students. Yeah. That's, that, and we're not we're, even close. We're regular. We're, we aren't right now. Well, we have fourth grade, I think is at 22, but. Um, I mean, when we I look up here, the, one of the things you talk about is the fifth grade missing this, fifth grade, there's 99 kids in the fifth grade class. Just to clarify so, something, So it would Michael. be pretty easy to do five classes and you wouldn't have a missing, you know, you, I don't know how you can have 19 kids in a class or f with 20 and then still have something missing. So it's, it's not about what's missing right now, it's what would be missing in this option to, to get that model to work. And it's not necessarily just for the 99 kids that are in fifth grade right now, but understanding that there's a class coming up behind them that is bigger and is gonna need those six classrooms. So trying to design it flexibly, those six classrooms, and to deliver some of these programmatic things to have those one-on-one -on -one or small space. This is just comparing the options across that in C minus without doing an addition, we can't get those spaces in that fifth grade area right now. It's just noting that. Just to clarify something Michael just said though, because I had the same impression at the last meeting, the main Department of Education does not have class size standards. Mm -hmm. They just say 800 square feet. So that 800 square feet isn't, isn't dependent on a 20 to 24 student class size because the main Department of Education doesn't actually have any guidelines on class size. That's just town defined. So even if you had 10 students in a classroom, it would have to be, it should be 800 square feet? Yeah. I, th I think they will ask questions just like you guys are. Um, but there are no guidelines to say that this is the size for this number of kids. We they could just say that classrooms are, are this. Um, so I, just to be, what's published. Just to be 
clear about that. But I do want it to be clear that we're not saying this is missing in your building, but in these options, when you compare trying to set up that model, just understand that in some of these wings, it, this might be upstairs versus right there, or this might not exist for this, this classroom uh, organization. Um, when we get to the uh, option E3, um, we have the six right size classrooms um, for each grade level. Um, we have the um, SPED rooms and the world language rooms in, in that neighborhood. Uh, depending on which one it is, because there's five world language rooms and a odd number of SPED rooms, um, some wings have two world language and a SPED and, and others have a, a different configuration. Um, the new CAF and gym um, with the option, so it's set up right now in the design of the new middle school to be able to access the SAGE from the CAF or the gym side, depending on, on whether you guys want to move forward with that or not, there's just that option. Um, right size library and STEM spaces, it does have the small group um, room and one-on-one -on -one space provided at each grade level um, to, provi to provide the special education and the RTI and when they're not being used, they work as that collaboration space that we heard in the ed specs. Grade level storage is provided in okay. each grade level wing. We heard that emphasized by staff over and over when we met this week and last. Uh, it's a fully accessible building and there is a teacher work room provided at each grade level. All right, I'll put this up here. I'll let folks digest it. Um, uh, just again, pointing out the differences of what different ones solve, different considerations. Um, the agile, flexible classroom, I've already talked about the differences between the three. Um, the layout modifications, B plus and C minus, we talked about last time that doing that cafeteria addition does make it less travel distance for the cafeteria um, in, in the elementary school we do still have that travel distance for um, the gymnasium, um, as well as getting to the end of the fourth grade. Um, the middle school um, uh, just sets up the model. Uh, obviously, from scratch, we can do a lot more to be able to separate private and public. Um, circulation um, can be more efficient. Looking at outdoor learning and play, um, so the, um, we're looking at areas when you build the new middle school, relocating that field on top of the, um, the fields that are out by Scott Dyer Road. We're looking at locations off-site for that, um, and we're going to review those with uh, town staff um, to get their feedback, um, and then um, come forward as to whether that's, that's an option. The cost for relocation of the fields is included in the site number we have been carrying. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, did I hear there is some work going on now to look at possible consolidation of other athletic fields, or is there, is there any any kind of overall look at fields in town right now? Oh, okay. Not not at the present time. No. Okay. So. Okay. So master planning, long term planning. There's a lot of text on this, but it's essentially our. Um, mechanical engineer going in detail about um, different things to consider in the options. Something to be aware of in B plus and C minus, we do have intrusive firewall renovation required um, in both of those schemes. Depending on the approach we take on E3 with the elementary school, um, it will be less renovation or we came up with a possible consideration to really minimize it um, in, in another approach that we'll show shortly. Um, we talk about, the, there's a lot of talk here about the diagrams you'll see. Mechanical impacts, um, this is really talking about that system separation that we talked about. So issues are similar to what we have considered for E3. The existing boiler plant is located in the middle school. Source of heat will need to be provided for the existing 1930s building if it remains, um, and we relocate um, the boiler room for um, the elementary school. Also understand there's energy recovery units serving the 1930s building that are located on the middle school roof, which when that middle school, if that middle school were replaced in E3 and that comes down, we need to take those off and you need to come up with a new system for the 1930s building um, for ventilation. 
if full cooling is added to the middle school um, with VRF, that system will be removed as part of the middle school demolition in the future. Um, VRF expected life expectancy for that system is about 15 years, so just take that into consideration with bonding and, and when you might replace systems. Um, that is pre a pretty big overview of, of what is talked about on this screen. All right, I'm not gonna spend too much time in the options. I'm just gonna pin point or outline anything that may have uh, adjusted. Um, a lot of what we just went over in text form explains a lot of what is happening. Um, I think the, the best thing would be to get down to some of the other meat of the feedback from the staff. Um, you all are very familiar with the building at this point. I'm not gonna go through any of that. Here's the B plus option with the square footages. So you didn't have the square footage at the last meeting. This is the renovation for middle school, elementary, as well as the shared renovation and new addition. I think most folks are familiar with this plan. It's the admin addition for the middle school, elementary school and the cafeteria kitchen addition that's two stories as well as um, various renovations throughout the school for um, things that get displaced or um, finding different locations for programs as well as wayfinding and the renovation to the um, existing cafeteria. Um, I, I was using the word earlier performing arts or performance center and that was confusing some staff members. So I think auditorium might be a better word for what we're doing there. Um, auditorium renovations in that location. What was the square footage of the cafeteria in this? Of the cafeteria, just one cafeteria? Uh, combined, sorry. Um, later on, I have that spelled out exactly in, in all the options, and I can show that to you, but I don't remember off the top of my head what it is for this one. Because I see shared new addition of 28,657. Yeah, the admin shared too, if you remember. So both of those are shared additions. Both two floors plus the admin yep. equals 28,000. Mm -hmm seems a little smaller than I would have guessed. I thought I, I, I would we'll, work. We'll triple check that. We've checked them a couple times, but I'll have the team triple check that before we send it to the estimator. I thought the cafeteria was more, the cafeteria itself, each floor was in the 15,000 square feet, feet range. Yeah, that was the case with the Colby Simons uh, cafeteria was about 15,000 for um, three so meal services a day and about 17,000 for uh, two. Um, so I'm not sure how that compares size-wise, Lisa, to what you've uh, framed out here. But, yeah, no, um, it's, a, it's a valid point. We're gonna triple check that. Okay, because that's a pretty significant difference in mm -hmm. size, I think. Yep. I would have guessed the total new construction was closer to 40,000 based on. Yeah, I think you're probably right, Michael. I'm wondering if there was an error in the in, in the data put in there, or well, it, very it well, be, someone could have forgotten the second story when they put it in. Yeah, that's what it was. Or maybe maybe the two stories, but not yep. the, or the admin was left out. You know. Yep. That's my guess. Yeah, we'll double check that. That's a good catch. Would that affect the pricing? Oh, for sure. I mean, your assumptions are working under twenty-eight, not under forty-five or forty-four thousand. Well, this is a different model than what you had before. So I don't have a price for this model. Oh, you haven't priced? You no, we haven't priced these. Okay. Um, so this is the long-term planning diagram. Um, essentially the way to, to read this diagram is the first column is essentially what the option is showing the additions in pink and then showing renovated area uh, firewalls or fire barriers I should say for um, uh, in the existing building that need to be um, essentially created via renovation and then approximate firewall locations at new additions. Um, I, I don't want to underemphasize how challenging those fire barriers are going to be to create but um, and something we need to work closely with AHJ to, to get sign off on. 
Um, the new, so then that shows you the option, and then as we go from the, we go to the center column, this is considerations and possible impact of future new middle schools. So what would happen if you guys decided, okay, we go forward with B+, plus, and some time down the road, we want to remove the middle school and rebuild it. Well, we dashed where the middle school would come out, and then looked at, okay, if you were to um, then, you know, you could use the existing elementary school and all the spaces we've created for the elementary school, and let's say down the road you want to replace the elementary school. What does that look like? Um, and so that's what the third column is. And I'm going to walk you through these in detail, but I just wanted to kind of set up expectations as to how this was um, done. So this is uh, the uh, B plus option. You can see the additions. Um, orange is the fire barrier locations and existing, and blue are the um, new firewalls um, that we would create as we do those additions. Um, the new elementary and middle school admin and secure entry addition, new separate elementary and middle school cafeteria shared kitchen addition, existing shared cafeteria renovated into auditorium and other targeted renovations. This requires major renovation to incorporate fire separation. So then if we go down in the, f or in the future and you say, okay, we want to remove that middle school, this is an possible scenario. Um, you demolish the area you see dashed, which is the middle school. We, may, we have to um, close off or enclose the building envelope of the 1930s building. And then we need to rebuild that connector that you can see there in orange. Um, <clears throat> that allows us to be able to circulate, oh, I can't do both the pointer and the zoom at the same time. It allows us to circulate from where we renovated the auditorium to that new cafeteria area. Um, as we think about this elementary school, so we maintain the 1934 building to be repurposed, turned over to the town. Maintain electrical, uh, electrical, sorry, elementary school cafeteria and kitchen addition constructed in option, hmm, that should say B plus, not C minus, for elementary school continued use. Maintain the middle school cafeteria addition constructed um, in option B plus as a multi-purpose space. So essentially you have an extra calf space because we've removed that, but that very well could be a multi-purpose space that could be used for a variety of things. It could be a project-based learning space for the elementary. There's other programming opportunities you could use that for. The town could use it for something. And we would ma maintain the auditorium um, that was renovated as part of B+. So <clears throat> then we look at, okay, and the whole idea here is just to, sh to start to explore, do any of these kind of shoehorn you in and not be able to give the flexibility in the future to do different things and and how would you maybe need to repurpose spaces so then let's say you decide to take off the elementary school classroom wings um, and you want to rebuild a the those portions of the elementary school so those bubbles at the top of the page just show a configuration uh, the red area would be the main entry the orange would be the admin a stage and a gym the cyan color or the classroom wings um, looking at uh, K through four um, and your different allied arts in purple, kind of in a courtyard plan. You would have the connection to the cafeteria and the kitchen and you'd also have access to the auditorium. So, um, essentially, the elementary school calf constructed, and again, we'll change this to B+, plus, will become a multi-purpose space or satellite dining for the elementary. Option to continue use of the auditorium. Um, option to use previous elementary school gym as an auxiliary gym. Um, this could be an extra gym for the community or for the schools. Um, and the admin addition constructed in option B+, plus can be used for district program or auditorium support space. Um, and uh, if the state requires universal pre-K and CDS to be provided by the school district in the future, these are active conversations that are happening, um, then you could um, repurpose part of the existing elementary school classrooms for that or 
build new classrooms where the current elementary school is um, to be able to uh, house that program. And then you'd have the option to have the pre-K and CDS use the cafeteria and gym for the physical education and nutrition programs. So that was kind of a long range, long term thinking as to how you might go about being able to um, replace all of these programs in time as well as fold in some future considerations. Um, and, you know, uh, I know that there's different programs that are running out of, you know, I think you guys are running out of space here and there's frees up room for district programming. All right, we've spent a lot of time talking about the high school already. I'm gonna kind of skip through these slides. If anybody wants to stop me at any point, these were what were carried in the previous options. Um, C minus, um, the major difference in this is there's a lot more renovation and the, um, there's two um, admin entries, one for the elementary, one for the middle school, and there is an addition for the kindergarten classroom. So that addition on the kindergarten classroom will get smaller. The red boxes are your additions. Um, most of the spaces get touched in renovation in this scheme um, by providing the opening between the classroom walls or a pretty big renovation in the kindergarten to right size those spaces. Um, you can see with this, that organizational pattern of the six classrooms plus the sped spaces in the elementary school. And then in the middle school, you can see the six classrooms plus the SPED, which is kind of that light green, and the purple, which is the world language. So you can see that model that we're starting to set up, um, as well as some of the small group and one-on-one -on -one spaces. All right, long-term planning diagrams, um, same, set up the same way. This shows you the additions, so, um, starting from the top of the page at the middle school, you have your admin edition. And then we have our music area um, that we have relocated next to the auditorium, the cafeteria, kitchen, cafeteria, the ki elementary admin, and the K edition. You guys know what this scheme is. I'm not going to read through all of this. The thing that's been added here is this also requires major renovation to incorporate fire separation. So looking forward, um, we look at um, if we were to move, if we were to remove the middle school in the future, um, we would need to enclose the building envelope in those areas that we have identified with the orange lines. Um, and we would um, maintain the existing 1934 building and turn that over to the town. Um, just like in B plus, you maintain the kitchen and the cafeteria addition. You maintain the middle school um, cafeteria um, as a multi-purpose space or a meeting space or a large testing area, um, which would serve, uh, would definitely meet the need for that 100 student um, testing area. Maintain the auditorium, um, maintain music addition constructed in option C minus for the elementary school. You can expand the allied arts offerings um, and uh, assembly space report, uh, support and program or community use. Um, and then demolishing middle school admin addition constructed in option C minus. So what we found, we looked, I'm just gonna put these kind of side by side, looking at that admin addition at the top, it really kind of, that, that is one addition that kind of pinches you from doing stuff in the future. Um, so looking at replacing the elementary, if that's what we're you to do in the future, um, similar, we just took a similar approach to putting the elementary school up there. Again, this is all diagrammatic, um, but you do remove that admin um, addition. Um, similar um, scenario, similar flexibility um, that you had in the B plus model. What, what, um... And then what happens, all that parking that you've created in front of the, the middle school admin section? In this one, yeah. um, it would need to either be, it would need to be relocated, yeah. 
I know it's getting later in this process, but in a world where we were only focused on C, which I know this isn't the exercise, but pretending for a minute, would we, would we really, would we really want two separate admin sections and would, like that huge parking area is it takes a huge amount of green space away? We have, you know, there are I, other op are there other options? To, <laughs> is it two? I don't know. There's four others. <laughs> <laughs> Besides pretending B plus doesn't exist. Yeah. Even. No. Um, we we have another option for the elementary school when we move the middle school. It will show you in the, in this one. I mean, one of the things is we can look at. Um, okay, if we were we could skinny up that diagram some more because we don't need to have the community use for the gym, put the gym down there. We could um, also be able to get a lot of those allied arts into that music area um, and not have to build more. So we can skinny that up so you can use all that parking out there because if you look at where that admin is, you look right here. Mm -hmm. If I just pull that right across, it's right here. So if I were able to skinny that up and push those down some more, we'd be able to reuse that parking area. Okay, understandable. That's kind of the problem with diagrams sometimes is they get a little bigger than they need to. And this is a somewhat random thought. Mm -hmm. We're thinking for the survey, but if we had the space, is there, how does everyone feel about asking people's opinions about the 1934 building? Bro. <laughs> what did you say? Bro. Can I, just say, can I say something on the 1934? <laughs> okay. Every, every week, we talk about the 1934 building. You and you are mentioning tear it down. There's a lot of people in this town that that's a lot of history. Let me finish. Agreed. That, that we say, well, we can't use it. Well, go back in the 60s when we tore down all the buildings out at Fort Williams. Now people say, why did we tear those down? The other one is we're not using it. Well, it, and Matt, if you come back two years from now and say, I need a new town hall, and we tore that down, you better update your resume. <laughs> That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people that feel very strongly about that building. And it's part of our history of Cape Elizabeth. And I'm just saying my piece, and I know I'm not alone. I know my wife is gonna chain herself to the columns if they do take it down. And there's a lot of other people. Penny, help me out on this. Well, to be, I would just like to clarify that I have never said that we should tear it down. I said we should, we I'm should with, decouple it from the school. I'm with Caitlin on that. I, and yes, and I'm not the only. Yeah, it's not. Just I'm, I, I understand, and I'm with you on that. I, I still would like to know what, in a perfect world, I'd like to know more about what people think should be done with it. I agree. Yeah. I agree, and I don't think it's our decision to make it here. Well, that, uh, that's where I was going. I don't disagree with you, Michael, and I, I think it's a, you know, it's a town building, really. Um, and and I, I think for the purpose of this project, it remains standing. I but it's there. there. It's there. Yeah. Like, it, it, there, yeah. it's there. We can't get rid of it. We're not getting rid of it. Like, we've got to think of the, these designs in the context of the limitations that creates. And well, I mean, we're essentially saying we're, we are decoupling from it and we are right. closing the envelope and that that's where the scope of this project ends and where you another project. scope or project picks it up um you very well could turn in all sorts of different things we're trying to stay away from it um in in a lot of our thinking just because we don't know what it's going to be um and there's a lot of different setbacks and things like that um but I, it seems like that's a very um, important and sensitive uh, topic that needs to be addressed separately um, because I don't know that you're going to have the time in this project to address that. But just for like the public record, I think like they, the original designs included taking it out. And I think the whole committee was in favor of that not like not doing that and decoupling it. So I don't, I think anybody in town who thinks that we have advocated it's for- It's out there right now. But that's not a correct reflection of 
I think, what has been said in the meeting. So just final three get the record straight. Keeping it. Correct. The final three options either reuse it or decouple it, or even in these diagrams, we're being sensitive to the fact that it remains. So to your point, Michael, but back to your question about the survey, mm -hmm. maybe we don't specifically ask a question about that, mm -hmm. but within our information that we provide, mm -hmm. we just make a note that the, uh, as you know, the, the building will remain for future, you know, determination or something. Just, just something to tell people that we're not, we're not demolishing the building. We're, we're going to, you know, the building will be maintained. The schools, you know, but it, you know, will be a future. There will be a 1930s building advisory committee. Oh no! There you go. <laughs> and Dave, yeah, but, yeah. I'll be there. Yeah. But it's a. Um, I think Dave's going to be the chair. Part of the overall equation. I mean, it's part of Absolutely. just cost, future costs associated with whatever happens there. And I know it's not for us to decide ultimately, unless maybe option, you know, unless we continue to use it in a in a school capacity. But um, anyway, in a perfect world, it'd be interesting to know. If, if there was a specific desire or strong desire for a certain type of use case within the town. Sorry, Larry was speaking. I think Larry was trying to say something. Go ahead, Larry. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I wasn't. Okay. Um, so I do wanna circle back. We can skinny up this diagram and be more efficient with it, um, with reusing some of those existing spaces um, to use that those drives, Michael. One thing people need to be aware of though in the planning of this, that parking and those drives where they are is where you were going to relocate that LWCF field that the middle school was gonna go on. So that now needs to be moved off site. Yeah. Or it gets moved twice. I mean, there's a possibility that it could fold on top of where the old elementary school is. Um, but it's just not as clean. You're, you're um, impacting things that you may have just done multiple times. That's, yeah, that, if you created a C minus version where the, we had a, similar to the B plus, where you had a unified admin in the front, that, wouldn't that create extra flexibility? It, it now could. and into the future? It, it could, what it does though, what it doesn't solve is it doesn't get the admin incorporated with the middle school. They are still very disconnected from that and that's what this C version was trying to address, yet it sacrifices other things. Proximity of building admin within the heart of the building is really important. There's no, there's no um, appetite to turn the 1934 building into an admin. We kind of puts it at the opposite What's end. that? What's that? It puts it at the opposite end, though I feel like it might be a little bit better, but not that much. You gotta think about where your parking and drop-off are, too. Now all your parking and drop-off are right on Scott Dyer Road. And I might have asked this last time, but inside the horseshoe, mm -hmm. different entrance for admin. You're talking about right here? I'm talking, sorry. Oops, sorry, you can't mouse. see. Um, I can't do the pointer and the zoom, so let me try this right here. Somewhere there, yeah. So you would still have, you have that small parking lot out there right now, and mm -hmm. we were using that for the services to get to the kitchen. Um, so you would be crossing your services mm -hmm. and your drop-off, but then you would have all of that drop-off right along Scott Dyer Road. <laughs> Nothing's impossible, there's just trade-offs. Um, so you could, I mean, you could take that library and turn it into the admin and put the library somewhere else. But now we would, we, what we'd have to do is show you the impact of the drives there because you need to drop students off in the, um, and have parking at the front. I just worry about the loss of the green space. Yep. It's, a, it's such a vital area. In well, I'll take it back to the team. We'll, we'll look at it again, see if there's any alternative locations and what those trade-offs are. I mean, the challenge. I get it. I there, there's trade-offs either way. It's just, it, it's. Um, Lisa, could you just give us the number 
trade-off wise from a cost standpoint. So if you kept the admin office where you have it in B, uh, as compared to moving the admin office over to where you have it with C, including all the cost of the parking, mm. the loss of the field, um, and that, that's the kind of the trade-off that I think would help. Uh, yeah, it would, that would help, because I, I, I think when people look at that, that was one of the biggest things that, that it, we've got B, we got the, in B plus, we've got the, both the admins coming in that way. And certainly we want to have a lot of the staff close to the school population, but there's a lot of offices down that hallway that you could have. So I just, people have, the difference between where we got the admin offices coming in at B seems to be pretty cost effective and very secure. And so the C is just such a dramatic change from that it, mm -hmm. and all the extra cost associated to it. I know there's some trade-offs, but it's quite, it seems to me like it'd be quite a bit of money. C is supposed and, and that's to be, one though, of the reasons like, why C is so much more expensive. Well, C has a lot more renovation, too. C well, has a lot more school. renovation, a lot more high school. Yeah. At the high school, but when you look at what... No, it has as more it's renovation. impacting B, it the has elementary more and, the, and, the, and the middle school... The C does add a lot at the high school. Well, a lot more renovations that aren't in B+. Plus. Correct. There's a lot more renovations in the elementary, middle school, and C that aren't in B. But to your point, I, th I think you know the idea of having different options and repeating the same admin entrance, <coughs> there's the challenge that we heard from the middle school staff over and over is just how separated that that entrance is from what they do on a daily basis. And right now, all their admin are actually more kind of in the, the heart of what it is, but their entrance is far away. Now we're gonna take their admin and we're gonna move them even further away with the entrance further away from the rest of the, the population. Um, I agree there's dollar trade-offs for the way that it's approached right now, but there's, programmatic and cultural trade-offs too that we just, we need to balance. And so all I'm saying is give us another chance to look at the location of that, that entrance and see if there's another way we can go about it that still allows that separation. Maybe, maybe the entrance can be part of that addition that's coming in, you know, off the back there or something like that. But you just can't get all the parking in that location. Lisa, it wouldn't be... Teachers could park in the back. It wouldn't be adding mm -hmm. a field, but where the D is in the draft, since you're adding more parking to the new main middle school main entry, perhaps more green space could go with that parking where, lot. Where's that, where? sorry? Where's that? The D of the draft. So it's like the multi-purpose field where the big parking lot is for the middle school now. I think you're turned around. No, I'm not looking at that slide. I'm looking okay. at, if you go down to the middle. Is this like number 38? Here? Yeah, sorry. Okay. I was I'm looking like, at the wrong. Really no wonder you all confused. confused. <laughs> Thanks. My fault. I was looking. What was it like, That's paper. <laughs> this right here? Yes. Yes. Would that, all that parking need to remain, or could that become some more green space, potentially? It doesn't replace the whole field, but. Well, Okay, so there's, we're looking at the C plus option in a couple different lenses. Well, when we look at it from a phasing standpoint and we've started to make all these moves, I now have a middle school over there. This is SBAC 2040 when they <laughs> Yeah, so the, we were looking at this diagram. And so where this started to come up is that this addition I got you. Sorry. Is pen pinching us from doing other things up here. Right, right. And then we got in the conversation about the admin. So we're trying to like solve, you know, 60 years the out. 60 years out. I yep. was trying to solve the question on the Tim and okay. Michael raising about not putting the admin wing there because of parking and losing his yeah, I'm really, I'm really focused on that green space. Yeah, and I, I was also, trying to solve the green space issue. I think, this I, I think about. You. Yeah. Where the bus drop is today. Yep. And it's, my, I mean, it's it's efficient. Hmm. It's one it's one spot for both schools. It's well, safe. It's protected from everything else. 
You know, they don't allow cars through there. Let, let us look at getting the admin over here. I mean, we're taking down this wing. That's interesting. Because it's near all of this already. So we're taking down this wing here. It's just Can we, this would be connected then to this, you know, main hallway right here. So instead of the main street being over here, it's here, your gem's right here. Yeah. Um, that, that may be an easier solve of sliding that over. And you have a big welcome space there. Mm -hmm. Right in that. So that field could remain there. I think of Lyseth. There. I think of like a big open space. You sort of already have that. If you knock down the, the old garage and where the music program is now, mm -hmm. there's a lot more. There's a lot you could do there. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's really Like receiving green space, yeah. Yeah. Can you explain that one more time? I'm sorry. So, okay. Um, in this scheme, we take this down, yep. this wing. So instead of having the admin here. Yep. Just think about it temporarily sliding over, not temporarily, just think about it sliding over here instead. And we still have, we have all the existing parking here. We have the dry, the um, parent drop off and the bus isn't you know, too far. We could probably bring this a little further over this way or even have a different way to drop off buses for the middle school, not have this area, um, keep that green and your admin is over here instead of over here. I'd love to see that. If yeah, there's a way to maybe. maintain that baseball field and the soccer fields. Now, when you build a new middle school, it's going to have to go off site because this field down here goes up there because of the LWCF or the LWCF goes somewhere else. Okay. Right. You're pretty compact on this site, so we have to put something somewhere and it kicks something off. Bring yeah. It together, go up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like it's vertical. Vertical fields? Yeah. I like. <laughs> Well, <laughs> no, so let us let us try that, because um, I think that I mean, essentially in plan, it, it's, it's over here. I think that may help. And then you have a nice even open area right there That's already exactly as a lobby. Right. That's a good lobby. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that may may kind of be the, the compromise between the two right there at the fifth grade. Yeah, wing. it's near the youngest students. Yeah. Yeah. OK, well, thank you. Yeah. All right, I'm going to jump over the um, high school. We're going to get the E3. Um, could I, sorry, could I yeah. add one more thought to yeah. the phasing diagram? Yep. So, you know, we asked to have the most extreme situation simulated, which is to get rid of or to move the middle school entirely. Um, the alternative would be to leave, you know, wherever the new admin is and the cafeteria, all the new additions and do a much more involved replace, remodel, kind of technical patch and fix. And yep. Kind of what you've move, been doing over the years. Yeah, keep yeah, moving students off campus or whatever. Yep. So that would be the alternative to what you're showing here. Correct. Where we actually demo the new additions that we're adding now. Correct. Yeah. Yep. You can do that scenario as well. Um, that, in some ways, takes place in almost the same footprint. Um, uh, so we figured the probably harder one to solve is then how do you replace a whole new area, which is why we kind of went the extreme route. But yeah, you can definitely do that as well. Okay, E3. I'm gonna try to have us not here all night. Um, all right, E3. Um, this, um, this is uh, E3 with the uh, admin edition, library edition on the elementary school, um, some uh, mechanical repair items, wayfinding in the elementary school, um, and uh, <clears throat> the new middle school, um, and then you can see that land water conservation fund site uh, relocated and then existing 1934 building. I am going to jump to the phasing diagram, okay. So this one's a little different because we've already moved the middle school in this. So this scheme shows when we do that, oops, we missing a line there. But when we do that, um, we um, uh, enclose the existing 1934 building. Um, and then um, we do in this scenario have that um, one renovation that we need to do for the existing firewall. Um, in that orange line. We are adding on the admin and the STEM edition. Um, and um, 
uh, it sets the site up for a complete replacement of the elementary school to go where the middle school was demoed. Um, and if the state requires universal pre-K and CDS consider renovating portion of elementary school for those programs. It made us think though, well, what, what if we took a different approach trying to get out of this renovation of these fire barriers? What if we took a different approach to E3 for the elementary school? What if we chopped off the oldest wings, um, which are um, the ones that you can see dashed, and we came back in with a new admin, your allied arts library, and a two-story classroom addition. It's about plus or minus 43,000 square feet. Um, this would replace your oldest sections of the building. It would right-size those classroom areas. It would provide a new admin on this side of the building that's, you know, we talked about that face and visibility as to where the entrance is. Um, this could look at either a access off of Scott Dyer Road or we could, like Al was talking about, combine the drives um, for that. During this, we can use the middle school for swing space. Um, and then after this is done, uh, take down the middle school, which is why it's still shown there right now. Couldn't you do something similar for Maybe not for, maybe it wouldn't make sense for C, but maybe a version of this for, for B plus. We, we could. Not the admin office, but. We could look at that, yep. We could look at that and see what that impact is. Um, I like getting more green space. I like two floor, multi floors. It, it helps with the distance. Like all of a sudden we've helps chopped off the distance of the fourth grade. Yeah. Um, it puts all your allied arts kind of central it put your admin central, because yeah. um, we, were, we were wrestling with, you know, the commentary we got on the admin that we show in E3 over here is, oh, that's great, it's more centralized, however, oh, now our pre-K and first graders have to walk so far. So how do we get that even more centralized? So that's where we started to play around with this idea. From a firewall standpoint, we love it. <laughs> um, it makes it much easier. We're not putting money into doing that. We're putting it into the programmatic areas. Um, so something we, we wanted to bring forward as a consideration, um, something that we could, um, we could price. Uh, to your point, we can look at, can we fold that into B um, uh, and or C? Um, is that a potential option? And, and what does that do to the overall, uh, you know, impact of those probably options. more of a 10 year you know b scenario is probably more of 10 years out but it's a or, or is this it is part of it this is something though that that's true couldn't be this can't this isn't really a long-term plan this is just an adjustment to what we'd be doing right now because it it depends on the middle school staying intact well if you it, it is it could be a long term it, this could be what you do to the elementary school as part of e um, because you would, you would not demo the middle school right away. You would swing these students over there and do this instead of that admin and the other renovations. Yes, would it, it, would, it would be more costly. That's what we want to see is how much more um, would it cost to go this approach and how much, how much more do you solve? Because um, you really... You, you're oh, this looks awesome, like you'd solve everything. But it, it, just it would solve like a lot for your you elementary. A near, I mean, you would have a nearly new school, essentially, yeah. with that, right? N nearly new elementary school. Because the good thing about this, <coughs> sorry, keep forgetting the microphone. The good thing about this, was I think it would, it would fix the most right off the bat. We'd still be renovating some of the school. I think it would, might get some of the community that Wanted two schools done. Yeah, this is G minus. It is G minus. Yeah. <laughs> well, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I think I think it right sizes a lot of things. This is, this is as comprehensive as G. This would be great to see the price, but it would also be, you know, this is a, a future state possibility as well. You could you don't have to do that now. You could do that in ten years. You don't, but get the data now so you guys right. can make an informed decision. But done in ten years would, would know what it would cost ten years out. All the. We would not be able, 
if we were doing this in 10 years, we wouldn't keep the middle school intact for 10 years. Exactly. Re relocating no, students no. would be a factor no, in no, 10 no. years. But I mean, yes. the, good, the good thing doing that is, albeit makes the project longer, the impact to the students is fairly low because all you're doing is just sliding them over to the middle right. school. I mean, all things equal would be great, but there are financial realities that we're well aware of, so. But knowing the number is nice to, it would be nice to know the, yeah. the number. So we Whether we do it now or down the line. Yep. Our estimator knows we love alternates. <laughs> it, does, does, it does seem like a wonderful thing to be able to say is that we, we've found a way to maybe not need two brand new schools, but genuinely only one and a half new schools. Okay, we'll continue to explore this, um, um, but through the, the kind of future looking, um, it was one of the things we started to jump out because we, we, when we lop off that middle school, it really allows us a lot more flexibility with where we draw the areas for fire separation. And, and while we're on this, yeah, even in a C minus scenario, I mean, you're, there's a price to whatever that is. Yeah, there is. Go into all three options today or in the future. So yeah. it'd be interesting to see. Yeah. It is problematic that old wing, and at some point it's going to have to go. So. Yeah, it's one of your older. The heating's an issue. It's your biggest. It's your Achilles heel because it's so far, and it's got the biggest heating issues, and it's the oldest. Um, so. Okay. Safety issues too with the proximity of the Scott Dyer Road and mm. doors down there. And what'd you say, Cindy? I said with that fourth grade wing, the wing that's the furthest out that we're talking about. It's and it also, I mean, I it's always a safety concern too because it's it's just so close to the road and you know it's got a door right there. Yeah. Um, so if a kid chose to like zoom out of school, they're right at Scott Dyer Road. Um, so it's. And yeah, continuing that thought process, just showing that, you know, in time you could replace those other wings. Um, and uh, if you did that in the future, um, obviously you need different swing space because the middle school probably wouldn't be there at that time, or, or maybe you guys decide to keep it, who knows. Um, but that would have then allow to create room for whether there's pre-K or CDS down the road as well. Okay. The other request was to see a site plan um, of a middle school and elementary school on the same. This shows the middle school design that we've been looking at um, and uh, its location. The field relocated here. Um, your elementary school was here. Um, this is a, a similar organizational pattern. One of these uh, would most likely be three stories for three classroom levels. Um, but it shows that you can uh, put a elementary school um, there and um, uh, have green space around that as well as circulation. I'm just curious, is that matching our current parking count or are we technically under on parking and you've added more? We have added more, I believe you're under, I um, wish Al was still here to answer that question. Uh, we have a table that tracks all of that. I believe we've added additional parking from what you have. Uh, I don't know that it's a ton, actually no, it's quite a bit now that I think about all your existing parking. Yeah, we have added parking. Yeah. Okay. That's a, how much field space are we losing in the, uh, you, what you're losing is what you'd be losing with the middle school. It's the fields under here. They get relocated. They would have to be relocated off-site. So you take this field that's here, and it pops over here, and then what was here is relocated. Just keep in mind as we go through these, whenever you add performing art spacing or gathering spaces, that pushes up your parking count. Yeah, significantly. Because that is the maximum that you're allowed to put in. That's what they look at the parking count, not day-to-day -day use, but what you can put in for that many people. And then they do it a fancy addition and come up with a number. But would we be adding more sp space for performing arts? We are? Not in renovation. I think if we, this is what we'd be required to do with new a new build. Mm -hmm. We did the, B or the C, we wouldn't 
have the same kind of requirement? Would we add all that extra parking? I'd have to go back and look at the table. Um, this is fully built out with the two schools. This does not have a separate performing arts component to it. Um, this increases the count. I have to look at what the triggers were. I don't remember them off the top of my head. Um, but if you were to add a separate performing arts space, then yes, that would trigger that. We have to look at with your auditorium, if that is public, if, if it is public use versus school use, and then that kind of triggers different count numbers. Um, for This doesn't have an auditorium, right? Uh, the, this layout, as of right now, does not have an auditorium. Yeah. Oh, it does not? Yeah. No. It's, e doesn't have an auditorium. What? Hmm. When it's, um, as of right now, you can add one. It's just square footage that we'd not add to it. Are there guidelines for how close uh, no. the parking needs to be? Are there opportunities to, um, you know, is there opportunities to share parking maybe a little further away or something like that? Particularly, mm -hmm. particularly like in an auditorium space, like in the evening, you know, the, the lot. Right. I mean, there's overflow parking that can be, used, so. be utilized and things like yeah. that. The requirements are going to be we need the ADA a certain distance right. to the front door. So just process-wise, right. I think we have some important choices to make Correct. tonight. Yeah. And, yeah. and these are good conversations, but this is years down the line in yes. terms of this. This, this is showing that a element, the question was, can you show an elementary school right. on the site with the middle school? Right. So we should probably get to. No, we got to. Can I just the? Can I just ask about that parking lot at the top? What the purpose of that is, and could this that year? be a replacement space for green space? Yes. I I believe that's there for whatever purpose you're going to do for here. For for whatever purpose, what? 1934 building. Oh yeah. You got to remember, if that stage, you need parking, you need drives, you need all that associated yes, with that yes, building. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, current solar study, um, yes, orienting uh, the classroom wings uh, around long east-west would provide ideal daylight for half of the classrooms. The reason we've oriented the building this way is mostly because of the existing drop-off that you have in your land um, to get the admin and everything at the level and facing the, the drives. The um, classrooms then come off in a pinwheel. We do need to be cognizant of east-west sun and making sure we have the correct sh um, shades for that. Um, but we are continuing to analyze this, and I think um, just want to emphasize that even though a certain design is shown a certain way, that's not necessarily what the middle school is going to look like. If that were to be the option you picked, um, we'll continue to evolve it and develop it and things like that. But really good comments um, and continuing to explore the impact. Um, but this does get a lot of, of daylight to a lot of the classroom spaces. Lisa, if, yeah. they, if they make the alternative switch to daylight savings all the time, yeah. does your bottom right corner of December... It comes out of the darkness. <laughs> I know, I saw that. I was like, well, I guess it's true. At 4 o'clock in December, <laughs> that is what it looks like. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm going to hop over all of this. Whoops. Sorry. Um, all right. Enrollment data, classroom quantity, student count for designing course spaces. So I took the, um, what was it, the October 10th, 23 enrollment study, and this is the one that has the 3.3% increase. And I, the actual spreadsheet I have, looked at the six ways to Sunday, and I cut the data all sorts of different ways. And it all was showing the same thing, that essentially we need the flexibility of having six classrooms um, per, per grade level, understanding that some years some will need five, some will need seven. Um, and essentially looked at today's enrollment, October 1 enrollment dates, as well as I looked at the averages of, like, if we start next year and we go out as far as the enrollment study did, what is that average class size for that grade level? And so that's what's in the dark green right here. But then I also said, well, that's kind of silly because the building's not going to open for a couple years, so why would we design for the students that are right now or the years, you know, right, you know, after this? 
looking at the earliest the building would open is in the year 28, 29, um, depending on what scheme you go with. And so then I looked at those averages and there, there's not a big difference between them. I think it was about a one student difference in, in those averages. But again, just test fitting the data, we still arrive at the six classrooms per grade. Um, and um, then the question becomes, okay, planning for the future, um, a lot of tonight's conversation is around that. Um, we can do classroom additions in the future. Um, they're easy to do on like the, I'll just take the middle school, the new middle school for example, they're easy to do on the end of those classroom wings. We can add um, classroom additions to those and I think even in one of the plans we showed a dash line for adding, you know, even two classrooms per grade level. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty simple addition to do in the future. Um, it's harder to expand core spaces like your gymnasium or your cafeteria or um, your library. Um, it's easier to add a whole classroom. Um, so um, for flexibility, um, you know, going with the six and then adding as you need in the future, but then really looking at, okay, what, what do we wanna design those core spaces for? And so what we did is this is just a bunch of data and this is really, really where we need some feedback because this is gonna help us dial in some square footages. So we just across the top here have the enrollment study data. Um, these are the numbers you saw on the previous slide, same colors. Um, I did add just the projected population for the highest year so you can see what that is. It's 568, I can see that color is hard to see now. Um, and then I also looked at it, well, okay, what if you were to add 3%, if you wanted to factor any kind of growth in the future for those core spaces, you have that data number. Um, if you add it to each of these, these are the numbers. And so we took all of those numbers here and we said, okay, if we were to apply the DOE formula for cafeteria space or kitchen space or a stage, library, or gym, what would the impact be based on that number? Um, the, la the, the enrollment study that we will no longer talk about had a number of, of 590, so we just wanted to show what that impact was. Um, and then for the 540, um, through all these different numbers, it will show us the incremental increases for that. The one that doesn't, the two that don't change are the stage and the gem based on DOE. The stage, for an elementary school, 1,000 square feet. Your stage is 1,382, but remember, your stage is used for elementary and middle school. The middle school number for DOE is 1,500 square feet, and what your staff is asking for is even bigger than that. So right now, your existing stage is undersized for a middle school, and it's undersized for what your your music program is asking for. By quite a bit. By quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so. But in option E, there will be no stage? No, there'll be a stage. So, so but how does that, okay, sorry, okay. Yeah, it's just not a separate audit, we're not like, we don't have a space to renovate as an auditorium. There or is the, a in stage. The, the gym. It's off the cafeteria. We have it set up between gym and cafeteria. You can open it to one side or the other or just one. Oh, good, good. Okay. So you definitely have a stage. Okay, I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, and even in talking with the staff, they said, you know, we would prefer that it just opens to one side. Um, so it could be a dedicated performance side. Um, we can, it, it, right now in plan, it's flexible. It all comes down to square footage. Um, so really, um, this looks at what, what those sizes are, and then it looks at what they are for the different options. And so right now you have a combined, you know, gym, uh, a cafetorium um, of 5,694 because it's both your elementary and your middle school. Um, in the, with the enrollments over here, you know, we're, we're looking somewhere in the 2,700 to as high as 2,900, which is pretty, pretty close to what we have for the B plus, C minus in each of those cafeteria spaces. And again, this is elementary school. Um, in the kitchen, 
I never advised going smaller in a kitchen. I've never heard anyone say a kitchen's too big. <laughs> um, but um, this shows you what your existing kitchen is. Again, it is sized for both your elementary and middle school. Um, with the DOE standards, you're somewhere in the 1730s you know, to 1875. And right now, in B plus, C minus, the kitchen is 725. Um, and um, in E3, um, for the elementary school, um, it is that larger size because it reuses the existing. Um, so it's, it's bigger than it needs to be. Uh, we talked about the stage library. Um, right now, it's about 2,332. Um, and in all of these, it, it pretty much remains the same size, but it is undersized depending um, really the library is done by f increments of 50 students. We used 550 on their table, um, but not significantly undersized. And then the gym is an interesting one. So the gym in DOE standards, there's an elementary school size gym, there's a middle school size gym, and there's a high school size gym. Your gym is almost a thousand square feet bigger today than what the DOE would fund. Wow. <laughs> Wait, which gym? The middle school? Elementary. The elementary school? Seriously? That's Seriously. Bad. That's tiny. Very. Yep. So we need to know what size we should be using for, I mean, it is what it is. The existing is that size. So we're essentially reusing that and all those options. But just understand that, that that's larger than what the DOE would typically fund. Right. Yeah. Relative, relative to the kitchen, Yeah. Um, have they identified the equipment they want in there? Because it looks, when you said it's smaller, it looks smaller. Am I reading it wrong? Is it the same size? I, the 1725, I believe, is for the elementary portion of the, Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and they're back to back. So it's, okay. it's double that size. They're yeah. sharing equipment, I, just, I would presume, right? The, it depends on how we design the kitchen. We've provided square footage and a dollar amount for equipment at the time. But they're not losing space in any option here. No, no, this is just for the elementary. It's not broken in E3. It's, you have a larger, kitchen because it's just the elementary using the existing kitchen if that makes okay. sense i just i just want to ensure that they have the equipment they need to yep. ensure that they uh serve the types of uh meals that we want to be served and not frozen foods so i i can't control that but we'll give them the space and the equipment they need i got a question cindy you brought it up a couple a couple of meetings ago how are we factoring in, and Matt, this might be a question for you, this affordable housing that we got coming in, that's gonna bring in more people if, if it goes, what, I don't know the status of it right now, and how do we factor that in? And also, like Michael said, that a lot of people wanna to move to Cape, so those are unknown numbers, correct? I mean, we, do we have enough room I don't know how you would forecast that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the hypotheticals would, would kill you on it. I, I think you'd need to work with what we've had for our current okay. growth and patterns there. I mean, that's we got to work with the numbers we've been provided. Yeah, okay. That's fine. And Dave, the flexibility of having the special ed rooms and the other rooms regular classroom size gives us flexibility if we have growth. Okay. It allows you to kind of move that bubble through the school without adding the square footage. So I have a question about yeah. kitchens. I know, I think you mentioned in Scarborough when we did the Wentworth tour, there's like one kitchen that's serving all of the schools for actual- Yeah, it's a cooking kitchen, cooking, so- Cooking kitchen, yep. thank you, that's what, the word I wanted. Um, are, are you looking at a cooking kitchen model if you're looking at this with the long term or? We have, we have, our understanding is it's a cooking kitchen in these schools until we're told otherwise. Each school would have a, its own cooking kitchen? Well, the, the elementary, middle school, it depends on your options. So right. your one. B plus C minus, I mean, right. what it comes down to is it's the equipment. Um, in, in the B plus C minus, you have a space that is the kitchen that's going to be cooking the meals for the elementary and middle school. Um, in, in E1, to 
Denise's question. Yeah, that's kind of what I was saying because I think you mentioned at Wentworth, Wentworth has a cooking kitchen, but it's serving other schools. Oh, it totally is. Yeah, so you could do a and, cooking I mean, kitchen. We're all on the same campus. So you could do the middle like school something. new cooking kitchen. <laughs> Would it be serving the high school and the elementary? Maybe. So know. what or, is the savings in the? That goes, so I, what I'm trying to illustrate is we could save in equipment in the elementary school, but if we're not impacting the square footage because it's an existing kitchen, the only where, way we have to impact that is just in the equipment that you would put in that kitchen. And, yes, I'm and to maybe out. that's There's more of an efficiencies because you're yeah. creating new square footage, right? And then you have an existing kitchen. What's the most? What's the smartest way to to make that new one a full cooking kitchen, so that when you do these future things, you can downgrade the size of that kitchen in your elementary. Yeah, and also just throwing back the operational question to Chris too. I don't know if that makes if that increases efficiencies or reduces efficiencies because I know staffing and things have been a challenge for nutrition services. So if the cooking was centralized and just the service was distributed. I didn't know if that created or created a bigger problem or less of a problem. I think it would do both, Cindy. Don't I think it, it could create some efficiencies, but it may not provide better service. Okay. We, we, that's, that's something we probably, we've gotten a lot of feedback from a lot of our staff. If we're gonna consider yeah. something like this, have a cooking kitchen and have food moved, oh. we probably we have, we have somebody that actually runs the kitchens for us. Maybe we had a, get some yeah. feedback from him. Yeah, that's a better idea. I, I just know that moving exactly. stuff from Her, a kitchen Robin. to cafeterias, you, it, it isn't the most efficient way to do it. I can understand why Portland schools do it, but if you don't need to do it on a campus, I wouldn't. The, the Scarborough yeah. schools do it because their kitchens aren't adequate in their other schools. Okay. That, that's why they do it's it. Their, okay. yeah, it's, it's not their, an efficiency I, thing. No, it's in, it, the, like those kitchens are in very okay. undersized. They're satellite schools. Got it. Correct. Okay. I can okay. tell you. I That's can tell you. Sanford used to do a central kitchen, and then distribute the food to all the different schools. They had one kitchen, and they got away from it because mm -hmm. the food quality became so bad that they basically just said, "Forget it." When they redid the schools, yep, they, they, they the right-sized all the kitchens, and they now cook on site. It was also a problem because what the kindergartners eat and what the seniors in high school eat are two totally different things. Okay. So they were basically built basically making three meals anyway. Thank you, Patrick. I just did, I think just to maybe make the point explicitly that I think maybe you were trying to make with this slide is that using the lowest projected number and using the highest projected number is a difference of about 380 square feet. In different programs, yep. Which is small. I skipped ahead, I did it for the next slide. Here. Yes. Yeah, so uh, exactly. I mean, right now in, in the, the um, and we'll see it in the middle school because it's going to be clear as to what we use for a design number, and we'll just jump over there. It's, yeah, here it is. Um, this so, one's about a 1,000 square feet difference out of a 107,000 square foot school. Yeah, so there's not a big jump in these spaces, but you will feel it if you have that number of students in the future and you don't have that, you know, couple hundred square feet for them to eat lunch. Um, so I want people to either, if you have an opinion now, I'd love to hear it as to what we plan these core spaces. If you don't, I would, I would love to have us set up some sort of Google Doc to be able to give feedback on this because we want to understand what to plan this for. Otherwise, we will keep it at the number that we have. I don't have a number for you, Lisa, but on our school tours, we saw Wentworth's cafeteria and how big that was versus South Portland Middle and how tight that was. And that's what's in my mind in ter terms of operational needs. Um, I, I'd lean on bigger square footage in these areas. Yeah, I would agree. The other point too, when we're looking, um, especially with option E3, where you're looking at a um, stage that's shared by either the cafeteria or the gym, uh -huh. um, that would allow for larger audiences and, and mm -hmm. you know participation and things. And the nice thing too is you can pull, we've, you orient it so you can pull the bleachers out and you have all that seating there as well. Um, okay. I think if you're talking about less than 1% of the project cost, going into ensuring that this school system can handle a, a nominal 
amount of potential growth, that that's a, a high reward for a low amount of investment. That's very well said. I would also be concerned with reducing square footage of spaces, like for example, the middle school gym. Um, that was going to be my next topic. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want any spaces to be smaller than they are now. So right now, perfect segue, because that's, that's one of the bigger questions in the middle school for us is the size of the gym. Based on the DOE standards, and you can see all the notes on the right-hand side as to how they size these gyms, um, the, the DOE standard would be about 6,212 with bleachers. Your middle school gym right now is 7,590 square feet. Um, if we were to size the gym as a high school court with 200 bleacher seats, the square footage would be 7,850. That's less than 300 square foot difference. Quick, quick anecdote tonight, I missed it, um, but there was something called the basketball bonanza at the middle school right. and they had to turn people away. There wasn't enough seating. Jam packed. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, that middle school gym is here? heavily used. Why are we here? Yeah. <laughs> I love that on. event. My daughter was in it. Does that, and a question of going along with expanding the square feet and how heavily you use it is, is that bringing in revenue too? I mean, do any of those uses when we have programs in there or? Uh, Tonight wouldn't have, uh, all those right. probably were raising money for, what did we raise? Right, it was a fundraiser. fundraiser it right. It, but I'm just saying, I know different programs use our middle school we gym. We do rent them. And we rent it. So, I mean, you know, when we're talking a difference of 300 square feet, to, you know, it's, if it's a rental facility, I think that's probably recouped in having a and interactive rental facility. And did you say that facility. was a high school size court? So for the high school size court and 200 bleacher seats, if you want more bleachers than 200, <clears throat> and that's another question, we, we took about, um, I don't know where we took 200 from, but we took 200 and we put it in there. You can tell us you want more, but that would be the 7,850 for a high school gym with the high school side, side lines that are 10 feet and 200 seats. I, it allows you to have overflow for competitive games, whether it be high school or others. It certainly enhances our ability to offer great programming during the school day, yep. which is the first priority, and then it provides two high school-sized gyms for the community to use. I think that makes a lot of sense. And, and it gives us a backup. If there is an issue with the high school gym, there's a backup. Mm -hmm. How many Not seats that we'd have an we issue with the high school gym? We've had issues, you know, but just in case it was that, unavailable. And that that you know it's used constantly, yeah. weekends and yeah. everything. Yeah, you'll you'll see too that some of the PE teacher feedback is they need more space. But this is a way to be is, able to. Is there a way to do some gradients on pricing by seats? Uh huh. Yep. It's just it well I say it's just square footage, but it's square footage, and so. Would not even seat two classes. So. I guess, give me some idea of what that gradient wants to look like. How high does it want to go, and how low does it want to start? I will, can I do that? Yep, tomorrow? that can be your homework, Chris. Sure. What I will say, though, is we can build the square footage, we can add seats later. You can, you can do the furnishing later. You oh, can't build the square footage later. That's not as later. important as I think. But the square footage for those seats is important. That's yeah. why I need we to need, know we that. We need to build the square footage for, I mean, we can, put no bleachers in to start. Yeah, but those bleachers take up square footage that we need to account for, yeah. Okay, great. So I'm hearing size up in the core spaces and high school size gym, understand the increment adds for bleacher seating. Okay, now the only middle school program we can impact with that is when we're replacing the middle school for that larger size gym. All right, school staff feedback. Okay, so we had three sessions. Uh, very robust audience at the middle school, um, which was wonderful. We met in the library. Um, we went through um, the options, um, and obviously the, the conversations centered more around the school that they uh, operated out of, um, but we gave them a high level on, on what those options are. Um, so in B plus for the middle school, um, 
Uh, pros, two cafeterias as long as appropriately sized. Um, they like the idea of dedicated performance space if right sized. Safety for admin office. The cons were concerned that the shared kitchen will lead to understaffing. Um, music classroom are still across the school from the performance space making setup difficult um, and wear and tear on equipment. Admin wing far from classroom slash student activity and disruption to student learning. Um, and not enough upgrades to the high school. The way it was presented is to be determined what those are. Um, so um, that, that's kind of where that, that was left because that's essentially where we are right now. C minus pros, to same, um, same as B plus until we get down to music classroom adjacent to performance space as a pro, appropriate music storage. Um, centralized entrance, good for safety and closing off gym after school hours. Um, cons, um, again about the kitchen, um, disruption to learning and, and the high school scope. E3, pros, appropriate music storage, music classroom adjacent to performance, having the school less spread out, safety for admin, classrooms organized in learning environment that promotes collaboration among the teaching team, can right size and configure all spaces to fit the needs of the middle school, improve design in all new facilities, love the community stairs. Cons, cafetorium stage that opens to a gym is not a good solution for a middle school with a robust performing arts program. Um, so they emphasized they only wanted to open to one side. Um, and when we talked after, they preferred the cafeteria side. Concern, concern cost will be a tough sell in CE. More comments from the middle school. So we had a survey that we did, and so some of these are organized into that. Others are just notes we took from, um, or conversations people had with us afterwards. Um, so I, yeah. I, I hate interrupting, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Can I just get a bit more detail? Can we get a bit more detail on the, the, the shared kitchen understaffing concern? So what, what we heard from a couple of folks is they felt like the cafeteria, the kitchens already understaffed and they felt like then having be having to where they were serving students at the same time in elementary and middle school with that shared space that they may not have enough staff to do that isn't that a budgetary question then is it a, it's not a space issue it's a staff issue it's a staff issue not a space issue the staffing issue isn't budget as much as it's finding people people yeah resourcing so but it's not a not a design. It's not a design issue then for them, unless they're saying. Well, that's what I want to understand. Feeding two groups of students at the same time would be more challenging, more complicated. I think they're saying they're going to need more staff to do that, yeah. and that you're understaffed right now. How would they be able to staff right. that model? Presumably, yeah. in a perfect world, we're not serving from 10:30 to 1:30, right? right? But you're going to need more people to serve more right. students in a shorter shorter period of time. of time. That feels like a problem we need to solve. That's a big solves problem. Solves right? the actual problem, though. The but, problem is people. But yes, right. but like to, yeah, to, to right size lunch, we need more it's people. It's not a bit. It's not a design it's issue. A problem for Chris. Well, we're, we're just. We'll we'll build you a beautiful kitchen, and they'll just come. Not a problem. Yeah. For you. I needed the problem. <laughs> not a, uh, All right, I'm going to move on to the next slide. I want to be cognizant of the time. Um, other comments, challenges identified. Options B and C, renovate cafeteria, auditorium, should have a stage large enough to fit 100 students, instruments, equipment, and wing space. Your current stage does not fit that. Options B and C include enough seating for the entire CEMS student body. We are struggling to get seats above, you know, I think we have right now 470 in there and the sight lines are awful. In, in, and in so we need to adjust them and that's gonna decrease. 470 is the current capacity? No, when we lay out the seats right now, we can get a count of 470, but the sight lines are awful. In the so, cafetorium today? Correct. Yeah, they're well, too. Yeah, well. To see what's going on on the stage. Oh, yeah, let me finish. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I might, I'm sorry. <laughs> The sight lines are awful the way it's laid out because of the slope of the floor. We need to rake it even more, which may impact the number of seats that we can in there. So that's part of the investigation we're looking at right now. But then that also limits other uses. Correct. So and we're looking, there's trade-offs there too. There's trade-offs there. We're also looking at retractable 
Bleachers Hussey has a very nice, and I'm just using that name because that's the one we are looking at today, has My some yeah. re retractable um, uh, options for auditoriums and the flexibility around that, so we're looking at that as an option. Um, to do. see how we maximize and make that flexible. Um, so I just, I just want people to understand, we're not getting 1,000 people in that space. Um, we're, we're talking, you know, three to 400 um, probably in that space with three seats. Three to 400. Um, again, still analyzing that. So I don't want people to lock in on that. Um, we want to finish our study. What Is about it going back the, to, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, going back to point one, how many square feet would be required to accommodate 100 students on a stage? Um, we will provide that to you. We're laying that out right now. Um, we were looking, I, uh, Melissa in our office had the existing stage and then the size the other one needed to be overlaid and we're overhanging drastically on all four sides. Um, so we'll get all that information um, so that we know that. Um, Option B and C include enough, we already talked about, need for a 21st century fitness center and suspended indoor track for CEMS. That seems like a more of a wish list. Um, Maybe. Aspiration. You mean like Mahoney School or? Or, I mean, uh, yeah. like the old one? The center has the suspended track around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it's above the court. It's really didn't, cool. But. Wentworth even, even, the new Wentworth School didn't even have that. <laughs> <laughs> so need a second gymnasium for middle school, one for grades five, six, one for seven, eight, to reduce class size from 50 oh, to 25. This was, this was the, the athletic um, request. A challenge will be to convince the community that the only option that makes sense is a new middle school. Um, so I, uh, I will have to look at the programming. I don't think it necessarily justifies the two spaces, but if that's the direction that you all want to go, we can definitely accommodate that. Um, but by we, increasing the size, you have flexibility. I think flexibility. that direction you heard from us, including me, is making the gym high school size. Yep. And I think that would enable two classes to occur. Yeah, that, like Wentworth, right? You've, it was mm -hmm. divided. With divider. Yep. Perfect. And that's not to discount that, that hope from the staff. Absolutely. Um, okay, this is our summary of the feedback we received from the music department. So on the left-hand side is their uh, space um, areas that they have requested. Um, we're going to look at the top here first. So they need a large band room for 100 plus students, you guys have a robust band area, instrument storage. Uh, for 320 instruments and um, practice rooms, two of them. Um, so what we did is we showed, okay, they gave us square footage as to what they were requesting. Um, then we said what your existing is, then what is currently in each option, and then what the DOE would fund for a middle school. Um, they are asking for a large band room f that is 3,850 square feet. Um, right now, the existing one is just shy of 2,000. Um, they're asking for instrument storage that is uh, about 1,500 square feet. Your existing is about 300. Um, and they're asking for practice rooms, two of them, which add up to about 160 square feet. Um, you can see what the options have in them right now, and then you can see the DOE. Um, the options right now are somewhere just around 2,000, plus or minus a couple hundred square feet. That is about what the DOE for the middle school level would fund. They would give you a classroom of 1,400 square feet, about, it's negotiable on storage. We see typically 400 square feet, and then if you had two practice rooms at 150, about 300. So right now, the request is more than double what the, the state would provide. And understand if that's what the need is, that's what the need is. We just need direction. Are we going with the DOE number? Are we going with the requested number or somewhere in between? And then as we go down, we have band office and instrument repair, band classroom, chorus music room, music library, uh, the request for an auditorium with a thousand seats, a stage, equipment storage, loading dock for scenery shop, dressing rooms, and green room. 
Um, and then we show obviously what's in the options here, right, as of right now, and then what the DOE would support. Um, and, and DOE's not black and white, but this is just working off their guidelines. So about, they don't support offices. Um, they do have negotiable for storage. Um, so you can see all the storage is about 400, classrooms about 1,400. They do not support an auditorium at the middle school level. It's only at the high school level. Um, stage would be about 1,500, um, and then they don't provide any of this as it's related to the auditorium. Um, and we typically don't see loading docks um, at uh, schools. Um, essentially, we provide uh, robust delivery areas um, with um, uh, openings to be able to bring stuff in and out and have lift gates. Um, all that said, if you look at the grand total of all of this, um, total program request is more than double the existing program. Um, and keep in mind that part of that, a good portion of that is the um, auditorium space um, and three times the middle school DOE guidelines. Um, so we need to understand, um, are we to design to the requested? Are we to find some in between? Um, and this is also where I put kind of our preliminary study of the reuse of the existing cafeteria as an auditorium. We are, it's resulting in less than 450 seats with poor sight lines and an undersized stage. So we are going to make modifications in regards to sight lines. The stage is a whole nother can of worms. That we really need to look at what we can do and where we can do things to maximize that. Uh, it, it's going to be a challenge, to put it lightly, to get to the 3,400 square feet, as your existing is 1,382. And so you're, when, uh, just to clarify, when you say requested, mm -hmm. it's basically, they've given you, it's under, they're requested on the left, they're saying we need space for 100 students, and then you're applying, uh, let's for, for example, the large band room, you're saying they requested 3850 square feet. When they yep. requested space for 100 students, you calculated that to accommodate 100 students. We, we haven't calculated that. They, they gave feet, us that. They gave you the They gave us the well. square foot numbers. Okay. The, the program document we have is probably four pages long, um, and there's a lot of detail that it has in it, but that was the size they provided us. Okay. Is this something you would, I mean, is there a metric that you would follow to say, how much space per student do you need to accommodate 100 students in a band room? That's a good question. Um, we can come up with that, yep. Okay, because I think that's important. I, I think, I mean, they, they're, I think understanding from them what their capacity needs are for things, mm -hmm. but then using your best practice to say, I mean, 100 students is probably more than a DOE guideline Way more. estimates sure. in a classroom, but apply what we we can come up with the right a, a number yeah, for that right for 100 ratios. plus students yeah. i guess that that's an easier one um and then the instrument store i mean yeah they're exactly. telling us what they need for that storage the the one that i think we we need to understand is the auditorium what what is it that we're trying to address and the reason we haven't put a That's the dedicated 5, auditorium in the middle school. Um, it says 10,000. It's supposed to say 1,000. I'm sorry, I put an extra zero in there. Um, the, um, the reason it hasn't uh, uh, been in that one is because it hasn't been a requested program moving forward by this group. So that's the only reason it's not there. If that's something that needs to be in there, then we need to add it. Just to clarify the gap, the six. Because right now it's saying that in option E, they're going to lose 5,000 square feet of space. Is that because that we haven't populated well, the auditorium square footage? Correct, because we're using okay. this space here. We just didn't put a number because it's in some ways dual, dual purpose, if you will, where these are actually dedicated to that use. So I feel like in the auditorium, I mean, I remember having this conversations even the last round, I think where it came down to was an auditorium that could accommodate the the number of students in the school. Is that, isn't that where? That's where, where they we landed, and then we moved to 350 and put right. in a fundraising right. option. But I, yeah. I think what this is a difficult one because it, it, this is a nice to have. 
right? Yeah. Or it's Oregon. I, I really, I, I don't when know. When we visited South Portland Middle School and they had a pretty substantially sized room that they can bring chairs in, they had the stage. If that's something, Lisa, we can do in the cafeteria where we could provide enough seating or in the gym to Which location was this? South Portland. South Portland had a really nice large room where they had a stage and they'd bring chairs in. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, multi-purpose. It, yep. it was more intimate though. Yeah. And so so here's, here's my take and I went to the middle school. When we needed to use the auditorium, they walked our asses down the hill to the high school, including band concerts. And I don't know why we wouldn't okay. do that, especially if we're going to put money into an auditorium. Say that again. We walked to the high school auditorium. I mean, they're using the performance space constantly. I mean, yeah. they're pr they're know, practicing you can, right you can now. Always, you can the drama program. We're not even talking about that. They're you know they're there every single day. You can always move stuff in and out. I was in tech theater for four years yeah. too. We move stuff in and there's, out of there every day. There's a lot so. of programming at the high school. Uh, there are, they're doing I'm, a ton I'm just of saying, I think a flex space yeah. like South Portland has is a much more economical and I, reasonable I, way to go. Yeah, I mean, I understand I economical, and I think that's why we're trying to be mindful of, of, of this. But it is the most expensive option, and we're making compromises already in the elementary school, in the high school, potentially, in order to make E palatable. It's not easy, but at the same time, we can't take the same issue with the gym. It's hard to take things, square footage away from what they already have in order to just get a new school. This feels like exactly the type of thing that if we were working with the finance committee, that is like an enhancement that would be, I think, probably very feasible to raise private funds to enhance, I don't know. To, I get it, maybe, possibly, but how do we know? And we can't do that today. Like, we need to solution now. Well, the last bond had raised X amount of money privately for X thing. Could I get we ask it. that the school be designed in a certain way that an auditorium could be entered at a later date? Right. I was gonna say, I think what the challenge was the last time when there was an auditorium that was put forward is it was too, um, uh, central to the uh, solution, mm. if it can be uh, positioned somehow that it can be potentially an add-on or enhanced or whatever. But I think this is one of the items that will get the most hits. A lot of people detest the current cafetorium, right? Yeah. And and there's there's that's driving a lot of support for. I believe that. No, I shouldn't say that. I believe that's driving significant amount of support. It received significant amount of interest in the original survey. It wasn't the top issue, I, but relative to the school outside of safety issues, it was, yeah. up, it was up there. I'm not opposed to pricing it. Right. Yeah. I think we need to see what it looks like without losing square footage or adding some square right. footage. And I, know, I, you know, I, don't, I, I can't imagine 23,850 is, is feasible financially. It would be amazing. But there needs to be, I think we need to show What's Look, 60 more than 60% of students are going through those programs, and a lot of st families that no longer have, you know, students are have graduated out. They remember how important that 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 program is. Michael, so, can I, I clarify? Lisa, Sorry, go ahead. So price it in. Your are um, you talking about adding other people? Are talking at one. has well, a 10,000 in it, right? Sorry. That's so okay. that's what I'm what? saying. You, you have the typo in auditorium. So we've really got an extra 9,000 square feet yeah. in that total. That's what we just picked up on, that this yeah. has an extra zero. Just so Lisa has clarity, are you advocating we price out adding an auditorium to option E? Or adding- I don't know what I'm at. I don't know exactly. Like, I don't want to have compromises in, in, in um, uh, what, probably the auditorium, no, but- That well, should be 10,000 because that's the number, it's, it's 10 square feet. Yeah, it's 10,000. Yeah. 10, okay, all right. Um, um, the, yeah. So I think we talked about sort of a performance space or where, I mean, the, the prior design had a yes, full-on auditorium, auditorium and, and maybe it's a performance space that's not as 
Um, you know, it's, it's somewhere between what South Portland has and, and a full-on auditorium. And, you know, is, do we need a thousand seats? That's another potential thing to bring up. You're, do you have, can I just... The, sorry, sorry. The answer to your question from me is yes. I think given the use, how popular that space is day to day. What, what space are we talking about? The auditorium space. Okay. Sorry. So adding an auditorium space to understanding the, the price. E yeah. three option. For how many seats? I'd say, if possible, to do the same sort of gradient. Can you give me a low low end to a high? I can. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because the high school is four fifty, right? I, I, and they, I think the ask last time was six hundred, and then we brought that down, and we were going to fundraise yeah. some of it, but literally, was this. Lisa, was this a serious, somebody literally, I mean, people literally were asking for a thousand seat? Yes. So something more than twice as big as what the high school auditorium is. So I, I just wondering if it was really a, I mean, a serious uh, request. Well, I mean, if, uh, Wish if you, somebody asks what, you, if yeah. people ask, you're... we don't have to care, and that's why we bring it up. I yeah. mean, you, you need to think about what, what is this auditorium or performance area? What is it gonna be utilized for? Is the intent to house the elementary and middle schools, you know, uh, student body there at one time? Well, then it needs to be one size. Is it just to house the middle school and the staff? Then it needs to be another size. Or is this a revenue generator and you're trying to, because some communities are doing this and it is bringing in programs from outside and generating revenue to do different performances. Yeah. That's what's going to drive this. Yeah. You see, because I, I know the, the, the what we have now, we can't give, we can't go backwards with that. We can't get us. And I guess one of the things, like Michael mentioned earlier, it looks like E would we would be going backwards from what we already no, have. No, we're so. not because it, the, this is the challenging thing with the square footage. So the we are using the stage and the cafeteria in the same way to which they're using the auditorium. Right. And so but, but the number's just not in there. But they wouldn't, they even said they They said they don't, don't want it like opening that. to they both like sides. That. No, they right. said they just don't like it opening to both sides. Opening to both sides, but would, yeah. would they, they wouldn't be able to use, there'd be programming that'd be using that concurrently it, very often. Um, it depends, but yes, possibly. Def I mean, the, the gym and so then we need direction that there needs to be a separate space because that's going to we're, we're losing flexibility is my, yeah. my point by not at least recreating what well, we already have that's their their preference i mean if you guys want to have that flexibility then it opens to both sides so it depends on where you want that flexibility do you want it in the back-to-back -back like the wentworth model or if you want it to just open to one side to the cafeteria, that's another model, or it's a completely separate space. So I'd like to get an understanding of how the school programming is, because I can see having a situation where if you've got a basketball game going and a band concert going at the same time, that's practice is more likely. For practice yeah, yeah. and band practice, I mean, it's not optimal, so I can see that. And if those facilities, because the we've band's already... not going to practice on the stage, they're right. going to have so a concert. band room. Right. But it could be a band concert while there's basketball practice. Oh, yep. Not just concert, practices. I mean, they're practices, practicing every day right, right now for drama. But what if they um, have a, oh, for drama. Okay, not band. All right, it's different. So I have two, they're, kind, they're related but different comments. So going back to what I said earlier, I would like to see an assessment of the requested square feet based on the need is described. So the hundred students, the and I know you know there's yeah. Saying, there's not going to be much of a difference. A thousand, we've got to give you some direction on that. A thousand, one thousand square feet. But I think decisions like you know, do we use the stage as a flex space is something where I really want to get an understanding of how are those spaces used today? Because if you've got basketball practice going concurrently with band concerts, you know, frequently, not even frequently, like just. Right. You know, when they happen, that's an issue. Um, the other um, thing I want to be conscious of if we make some of these decisions is that we're treating different types of programming um, equitably. So, you know, we, we all said, oh, we need this gym. The gym's high use. You know, we need the performing arts space. To, I want to make sure that the different types of programs are, are getting equal attention. So I want to make sure we're not 
focusing and you know doing a bang up job on a great basketball court, but then we say, well, we need a tiny maker space or something like that. So I just want to keep in mind mm -hmm. uh, on an overall level that we keep whatever we do equitable. I wouldn't want to like, you know, in, 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 a, in line with our programming as well, yeah. obviously, but. Um, I mean, when, when I was working on the um, fleshing out a bit more of the needs the, earlier, earlier this week, I, I did realize I actually added a section for performing arts because we didn't really have that in the original matrix. And I feel like we might have, I don't think we, had, we, we should have emphasized it more a little earlier in this process. Mm -hmm. this is, there's a lot to digest here. Well, let hard, me. It's hard me, to understand. I get, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Let so. me just break it down. So, to your earlier point, Cindy, there's not going to be. I can just look at some of the numbers. There's not going to be a big difference between what we would recommend versus what they provided. Okay. The only thing that's unique to their program is how big that storage area is. I'm, we haven't seen a storage area that big, but if that, we need them to tell us what they need for storage because it's not one of those things we can say, oh, it's this. If they have that many instruments and they're saying that's the amount of space they need to store, then that's what's gonna drive that. Um, a lot of those others aren't gonna change much. Um, the, um, uh, the large band room for 100, pretty close. We'd probably do about 3,600. Um, auditorium is gonna be driven by the number of seats. But what I, what I heard here tonight is that we wanna look at incremental costs to add a auditorium space for different seats to E3. We can take that and do that and make sure that we increase the size of the large band room, the band classroom, and the chorus room in all of the options. Yes. Make sure that they address as close as they can, because in some of these we're not moving them, like B is going to be what it is today. Um, but in C and E, we can meet, we can increase those to match. It will increase square footage um, and, and provide that so people can see um, that full program in there. Does that sound like a good path forward? Yes, I guess I'll make a little plug because I played an instrument that I practice rooms feels like a, a low hanging fruit there with not a lot of square footage, but um, probably a critical. It's Criti used. An extremely critical addition. Yeah. And so I, think, I feel like. Especially it, as people are learning. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Being able to separate people into different rooms. And so I would just a little plug yeah. to put okay. practice Good. rooms in. But the, there's. Yeah. I'm, I guess I'm struggling with. With what? What does option E. I know we don't know the number, but are we saying that. We're trying to figure out the, the square footage per student. Looking at it's good, and that's where we're headed. I mean, the number. So it's a lot bigger than 1950 for the yeah. the band room because right now. Oh yeah, yeah. No, we're gonna. Up, I just said we're gonna increase all those. Proportionally, working on the assumption of 100 students. Yep. And it's essentially gonna be what they need for the 3,850. That that's for the 100. So it's about 3,600 for just that space. So that's going to increase and then you need all that storage space. So We're essentially- not, It's not gonna be 3850. You're, you're, you're not gonna upsize it to 3850, are you? Or what's the number you're- you, 3600. 3600. Yep. Instead of 1950. So I'm essentially gonna take the space that they need in their program and put it in the other options at the size they need. I okay. guess is what I'm saying. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. So you are using their their numbers, your, their request. Very close to. I okay. mean, for uh, the difference between 3,600 and 3,850, we're talking 250 square feet, Very give good. or take. But yeah. we were asked to base off of our best practices for that. Okay. Good. Um, so give or take, yes. The last thing I'd say then is if, if we do commit to option E, it would be a shame not to invest in this program. And get them to the right size relative to the to the. We're going to uh, increase them on all of them. Exactly. Oh, on all of them. Yeah. So in, in B we can't because we're reusing existing. So I shouldn't say all. In C we're going to increase okay. it because we're replacing those spaces. In E we're going to increase it. The incremental cost for a auditorium can only be looked at at 
E as part of the building, you can also consider an auditorium as a separate entity not connected to a building too. I just wanted to put that out there. Exactly. I've been wondering about that, yeah. Lisa, but what we're looking at right now with E3 that we've seen already, some that doesn't include the size that we're talking about Correct. here. Correct. This would be an addition to it. This would be addition to it, yeah. I think we still have elementary school feedback and high school feedback. Right. We do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, elementary school. I, um, w we had light attendance. Um, I think some of the other ones may have been um, part of a, another meeting and therefore we got, to, we got undivided attention from most of the staff. This had very few folks. I think there was about seven or eight. Um, uh, ideally, would be able to fit a whole grade level in the cafeteria. Um, I think we indicated uh, there's three lunch, it's designed for three lunches, um, and uh, provides sufficient staff and student bathrooms, like the secure entrance, improve from what they have currently. Um, ideally, would include right size K classrooms. Um, Right size, that should say not included in option B, not E. Um, nurse liked improvements to her space and location. Um, need for conference rooms for IEPs, we reinforced that was included in the admin. How can a new elementary school be accommodated on site in long-term plan, we showed that. Make sure small addition in C doesn't take away from program area, so that's that kindergarten classroom. And desire for performance space in middle school that elementary can use that can fit a whole school. High school. I'm going to keep going until someone interrupts me. Um, some felt that there was a lot of athletic scope and not much for the rest of the school. Uh, PE has no space to store stuff, equity issues in locker room, public restrooms, access to materials for fitness, for trainers, fitness sitter for all to use, storage issues for the theater auditorium. The librarian was opposed to utilizing a portion of the library as a flex test, testing space. They would rather a testing space be built as an addition and that it would send the message that the library is not important to take away from their space. When addressing the HVAC, think about the humidity levels as well. On the third floor, one of the science rooms is too small to be a science room. Windows are difficult to access in the science rooms. Um, a lot of support for creating dedicated lounge slash socialization space for the students, but concern about students congregating where, where shown. I think they were referring to the area outside of um, the gym cafeteria area. If the achievement center could be relocated, so this is the big idea that came out of all of this, is to give them an addition for testing and the achievement center and then renovate that lobby and the achievement area as a area for students to congregate and socialize and collaborate. Um, concern there is no one on the SBAC who works in these buildings. Make sure to address the site traffic patterns and circulation. Then as part of the, that was kind of through the dialogue, then there was a, we do an anonymous survey so people feel comfortable giving us anonymous feedback. The things that are highlighted appeared multiple times. Um, there's a section on the library, library, uh, could be more versatile with a garage door to maintain open flow of the library, but close when part of the library is needed for private space. Leave the library as is. Serves half student population every day. To reassign, reassign and redesign the space would be a mistake. It's utilized in many ways by other half of the population every day. Maintain the spaciousness of the library. Need proper testing room, not the library. Were those thoughts echoed by more than the librarian? Yes. Good. Just but um, yes, good. yep, they were. There was several folks that came through, and if it's highlighted, it came up um, by by multiple people. Um, classroom and teacher workspaces, um, and the idea about that. I'm going to go on a t little tangent real quick. The idea of that addition, they also saw it as kind of the missing multi-purpose space that they're looking to kind of have as a as a, uh, a space in the high school right now, and so. Um, we kept hearing that that was uh, uh, a priority. Um, classrooms and teacher workspace. Okay, sharing my classroom as long as I have a quiet space to do my work somewhere else. Ideally, provide a small working space with desk, task light, sense of warmth. Meetings slash departmental offices with desks for teachers who travel. Need more classrooms for floating teachers. All teachers of a department should be together in continuous space. Not enough classroom in the same areas. 
wasted space in the faculty copy room and storage room on the second floor, enlarge this um, substandard uh, science classroom in 321. Um, student gathering space, nearly every staff member emphasized the need for this. Um, students need a space to meet, slash lounge, socialize. If we make a student gathering space, make it so it's not disruptive to classrooms. A large social, socializing space at the main entrance is a great idea. That was kind of that central area we talked about. Need socializing space that isn't the library. Space for upperclassmen to spend their free period so they don't have to leave the school. And then athletic space, updated locker room, weight room, athletic facilities, bathroom and locker facilities that accommodate non-binary students, bigger trophy room, and deprioritize athletics additions. Oh, there's more. <laughs> um, other, more electrical outlets, um, more versatile lighting, second floor hallway is very dark. Bring walls to ceiling and classrooms for soundproofing, so that's that acoustics we've been talking about. Um, to prioritize STEM over humanities is a mistake. Better internet, Wi-Fi, security, bathrooms, more in need to serve all students. Um, there's a pipe burst over February break. New windows are needed, HVAC temperature control. There's big swings in temperature. Uh, comment about lead in the water. Reconsider repurposing the ATM room used to be relatively flexible multi-purpose space. That, I believe, is the robotics room right now. Um, include seating with built-in tables in the auditorium renovation so it can be the new testing space. All right. A quick question on the high school. Yeah. Is, it's probably not easy for you to answer, but relative, we have, you know, a $17.5 million, 17.3 for option B, 25, 27, 27 for the others. How aligned are those with the repairs and the renovations with what you're hearing directly from here? Um, how much of this are we addressing? Or how would you even think about it, approaching that question? Yeah, interesting. Um, so I think the, re the repair will address a lot of the things up here. Um, I think what our takeaway from the conversation was, you know, a couple things. A space that can be used for testing, and we analyze all the different spaces in there, and to get 100 students in, the only place they were fitting was the, the library um, without some sort of conversion in the auditorium to, to be able to do that. Um, so if, if you were to just prioritize that addition with testing multi-purpose, you can get that socialization space and have that other space. If you prioritize that over some of the other things, you could address a lot more of what you're hearing up here. Um, and then, um, you know, look to do some selective, maybe renovations for the, the Title IX work and other areas that came up. The other place that we heard um, in here and in conversations afterwards was, you know, if, um, that would be the, the, that addition we talked about would be the, the higher priority, um, and then it would be from there probably the fitness center. And they don't have access, they're not allowed to use the, uh, the fitness center with the, um, next to the pool? No. 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 And I don't know if any of you have had the opportunity to see the weight room at the high school for students, but it is. It's nothing. It is. It's heat. Why are there so many people? kids hope the gym in Scarborough after school, is that because they go over there to work out yeah. instead of our gym? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because we have a lot of, as we have mu musicians, we have a lot of athletes too, and yeah. they, they want there's to a, train. There's, there's a lot of them at Snap Fitness. In, they, they go there too, down in South Portland, yeah. on Broadway. The, I'll, anytime I'll go to there, it'll be a half a dozen, as many as 10 Cape kids down there, working out down there, so. I think we've meet. actually heard frustration from parents that they, I feel like this came up at a meeting about there, how some there is families paying gym costs, memberships. Yeah. Gym memberships, and I mean, what? Not, it's not inexpensive. I mean, no. I mean, and you look at, I mean, we've got our, you know, we've got state champion teams across the board, and there we don't have adequate training facilities for them. So, not even close. That's oh. another thing we can't ignore. What do you need from us, Lisa? Yes, I want to uh, recognize that Kerm is about to say something, and I'd be happy to answer. Okay. That. Um, as a General comment, I think that we'll probably have 
a different scope for the high school in each option. So the more broken out pricing you can give us, the better, so that we can kind of pick and choose. And then I would recommend maybe as a filter for how we start to group or you know look at all of these different options, it would be good to know which items need either the creativity of an architect permitting or like you know a large contractor to get things done because there's probably a lot of things on here that the school could hire somebody on their own maybe don't even need design services really or permitting so that might be an easy way to start to filter out what should be included in this project mm -hmm. no that's definitely a great and I, one of the things i was going to there's a, there's a lot of things to consider for, for all of this. I think we heard what you want to look at in the B plus, the C minus, and the E through this conversation. Um, it's very clear we want to right size the performing arts. We want to provide the high school size gym in E3. We want to look at incremental sizes for bleachers as well as the auditorium in E3. Um, and look at revising the entrance on C as we talked about um, and also that new idea we came up with, could that apply other places and what might that look like? Um, those are the big things we heard in the B plus, C minus, E3. The bigger kind of nut to crack, I think, is, is what we do in regards to high school scope. We have a lot of it already broken out in the slides you saw. It's like, here's what this is, here's the cost. I, I, I think if we keep it that way, it allows you guys to kind of see, okay, for, B minus, C plus, E3, here's where the numbers came back in. We feel comfortable looking at X amount of scope to kind of fold in. Um, and then we can help you guys understand like some of the stuff in regards to like the locker rooms, a lot of that's finishes that, that could be done, you know, by a smaller contractor and getting new lockers and things like that. Um, there's other things like that to your point. Um, when we're talking about, you know, in addition, you're, prob you're gonna want the big contractor to do that. Um, what I would like to add, to request to add to the list is what we heard in regards to this addition for testing and the um, flex space at the high school, so you have that number, um, because that was the biggest difference that we heard through that conversation. A lot of that other stuff is addressed through repairs or some of the other items that we have, but that was the big, big one that was like, oh, okay, we don't have that addressed separately. Um, did they have comments on the field house? Did you hear anything specific to the field house? Or I think there was another athletics addition that was in the scope. Did they? This is what we got back on athletics. Deprioritize, de okay. There was a mixed group. I mean, the, I think depending on who you ask, right? right? Um, yeah, bigger. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, updated locker room, weight room, athletic facilities. I think what you're hearing there is what we've heard about the locker rooms, what we've heard about the weight room. Um, we didn't necessarily say hear anything specific, and correct me if I'm wrong, Emily, about the field house, or did you? Yeah. I also, just similar to the way we were thinking of it. You there know. were a few people that did raise some questions just about the amount of athletic scope, and then that kind of sub bullet was someone responding because they asked where it came mm -hmm. from, why that, why that was the focus. Okay. Because when it, like the field house is another example of something I see like maybe you could do private fundraising for. It's desperate. I, was I mean, actually it's something we really need. Focus. But that seems like a private fundraising opportunity as well. Um, and then a general comment, it kind of goes along with what Corinne was saying about, you know, are there things that we could pull out to do with individual contractors? Conversely, are there things that, you know, they just, well, we have the people on site at the elementary and middle school, like, let's say, better Wi-Fi, better Internet. You know, does it make sense to just do all three schools mm -hmm. because we've already got... What are those district-wide things you should address? Exactly. Right. I also feel like taking this high school 
feedback into account. I think it's important, but I also think it reflects probably what the employees of the high school are hearing us discussed, which is, you know, continually talking about like less investment in the high school. And I know we've, I have beaten the Title IX horse to death. So <laughs> that they're hearing us talk more about athletics. They're hearing us talk about um, deprioritizing the high school. And I guess, I, I mean, I feel like if you're out there listening, I, I feel like what we're trying to do is think about how to strategically execute the high school in a, in, in a different way that doesn't you know, impact this bond. It's not that we don't think that these things are important or that it's just an athletics issue. Well, was yeah. Back okay. on the field house, I think it was like for two point something million dollars. Two point nine. Do you have a footprint, what it looks like or anything, or how'd you come up with a price for that? Uh, based off of the square footage of the footprint. I don't remember what it is yeah. off the top of my head. I know it sounds really high, but they're expensive to build. Okay. You can put the gym in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think huh. to, to, to Caitlin's point, I think the Title IX things have been, we've identified them for years, and we haven't done anything for them. We've had plans to do something, we put it off. We, another plan, we, you know, we're gonna do something that doesn't get done, but I'd, I'd be really reluctant to, as part of whatever we're not gonna do at the high school, to not at least address Title IX issues that have been clearly identified. I'd also second that the, and this is coming from someone that coached high school football here for five years um, as an assistant coach. I would say that we need to probably look at keeping the field house in the scope of work, but try to find some private funding for it. So I think that would be the best bang for the buck for everybody. Because um, I don't, I don't think it should be a priority, um, and I'm someone that's pulled tackle dummies and dragged them along and got trying to get the kids to do stuff so it's um but we do need to improve our weight rooms they're pretty much pathetic and our athletic training areas are not up to par in any stretch of the imagination one, one last comment i'd make on this and, and this is to follow up what patrick's saying is it's one of the things in this town that's been inequitable for a long time the kids that can afford to go to Snap Fitness or over to the Lifestyle Gym, they go. Or they can get a private coach or what all. The kids that can't afford some of those things, we need to provide those facilities for them so they can get the same opportunity that the kids whose parents can afford to send them to the, the private uh, fitness centers. So It, it is uh, a huge inequity. I, I know I would, I would have loved to have been able to do team lifts to even that out. Um, especially for something like football, you, that the kids that do and the kids that can't, are, there's a big difference. Um, so being able to work as a team, and it's also a good team building exercise, um, I think that's important. Because um, it's, not, it's not just, I mean obviously we want good programs here, but it's not just about programs, it's learning how to work with other people, um, especially in the weight room if you're doing it correctly you usually have the older guy, older guys working with the younger, um, so they're learning how to be a leader. I think that's important. I, I agree, Patrick. Where are we at? All right. Where are we at? Any more? Okay, that's where we're at. Do you I have got everything you do need? You have what you need. I got what I need. I'm going to make those modifications to the options. We're going to add the scope we just talked about to the high school, so we can add 